to start recording when I quit recording. So uh, the only thing that was missed was we just did the Pledge of Allegiance. Um, there's uh, masks and hand sanitizer available on the front counter for anybody that would be interested. If you have a public comment, please sign in and uh, I'll actually open the floor to public comments at this time. Good morning. My name's Dan Klein. I live at 14 Rosebush Court in Stonecraw Village. I have a number of questions for the Board of Supervisors regarding the Stone Group bond money that's being held. Stone I represent Stonecraw Village HOA Board. Uh, we'd like to know the total amount of bond money that's left to be released to Stone Group. We'd like to know who holds this bond money. Is the bond money in a group or so much for each project in the development? Who releases the bond money? How is it released? When? And if it's a by vote of the Township Board of Supervisors. And do we, the homeowners at Stonecroft Village, have any say in the release of this bond money? Those are our questions. I know you won't be able to answer them this morning, but I'm hoping you'll take some time to research them and maybe have an answer for us Thursday evening at your regular monthly meeting. Absolutely, Dan. So with the bonds offhandedly, I don't have all, all the details, all the specifics, but uh, the bond is a, a large amount and then it's broken down categorically for certain things, street lights, roads, stormwater, et cetera. Um, there have been a number of releases in the past for certain projects that have been completed. Uh, however, there are a number that are still withstanding, and it is by vote for the board to release those. We go by the best uh, advice of the engineer in terms of uh, whether it's been completed and completed correctly. Um, and in some cases, we are able to push back and withhold certain things, but there are other cases. A good example, I think, is most recently with the streetlights. Um, unfortunately, whether we're 100 percent happy or the, the residents are 100 percent happy if it's been done exactly to plan we are legally obligated to comply with that request to release the bond money if it's been met in terms of criteria uh, with that said we do understand the concerns and some of the the apprehensions that the residents have especially around the stormwater and the roads and the sidewalks we will not be releasing anything until we are satisfied with that. And one of the components that I am looking for, in addition to the engineering, is to make sure that you as residents are also satisfied with that. Because if it's something that, generally speaking, the, the group of you are upset with, if the engineer says, I mean, it's sort of right, but not 100%, then absolutely, we have something that we can push back on and be like, no, this is like the barest of minimum, try it again. But otherwise, there are some things that we have to conform to. In terms of information, we'll happily do the, the research on that and get that for you for Thursday night. Thank yeah. you. I, I could probably answer that last question for you as far as uh, the Homeowners Association. If you're not party to the contract, the answer is probably going to be no. So we have to go strictly with what the contract says. But if you guys are not party to the contract, which I suspect you're not, because this stuff was drawn up way before a homeowners association was developed, then you probably have no cause. It doesn't mean that you can't take them to court over issues. You can, but it probably means there's you have no weight on this particular contract because it's so construction contract. The, they're actually, we'd have to look, but there right, is, some, look, there is yeah. some weirdness with how this was done because the HOA was originally being run by like Stone Group prior right. to the residents yeah. being there. So yeah. there are some some contracts that have right. the HOA in it, even right. though they weren't part of it at that right. point. So you'd have to find out what the specific contract <laughs> stipulations are. So we'd have to get the solicitor involved with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, when I say do we have a say in the matter with the release, if we can prove to the township supervisors, uh, a good example was the repair of the curbing mm -hmm. that's been done by Landmark, mm -hmm. which is atrocious. It, it's like they went around and put a Band-Aid on every crack in the curbing. Mm -hmm. And it, it, the job is very poorly done. It's not going to hold it up. And if we can show you things like that, we don't want to vote 
We don't want to. Oh, no, oh, no, no, you absolutely, yeah, no, absolutely. We will absolutely, absolutely. input right. into. Right. So those issues should come to us. Don't send it to McCarthy because, yeah. because McCarthy Engineering technically is our um, contact person. So you tell any problems, you send us documentation, pictures, whatever. We yeah. want it. We definitely want to know. That's that. why yeah. we're coming right. to the board. Yeah. Right. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just, you know, we each need to be aware of what's yes. going on. Yeah. Yes. I completely agree. And I obviously can't make a like a sweeping statement for all future things, but right. bare minimum, uh, as long as the three of us are sitting here, we're going to take every bit of input that we can get from people. Oh, yeah. So, um, I mean, it's getting very close to the end. Yep. And they will not be able to finish that out until we are satisfied, especially with the roads, the concerns about the, the, the foundation elements of the right. roads, uh, the yeah. sidewalk, we actually are, have already talked to McCarthy Engineering well, we about. Have another sidewalk. Well, yeah. well, the oh, front side. Yeah, yeah, the curbing and stuff that, that they, right. they kind of band-aided. Yeah. Um, we've actually talked to the engineer already and they completely agree. It is woefully inadequate and they're, they're, they're not going to pass that. They're, they're never going to pass that in a million years. So they'll actually have to do the proper repairs, which I think in a lot of cases is cutouts of, of a specific amount of length. It's pretty and pre-prescribed. Our yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. So that kind of stuff is going to be an absolute requisite to close any of the applicable bonds out. Like they simply will not be closed until that's been satisfactorily addressed. Okay. I assume this bond was established 20 years ago. Oh, was it, they're, yeah. they're old, but there's still a bunch of money in there. I think it's like, yeah. like either a million or 1.2 million. They were established when the... It's adequate at this point. They were established when the development was started. Yeah, that is... But there's that, adequate funds in there. It, it should be, yeah, because they do something. they do periodically adjust. Like there's, there's a review on well, that. Okay. When um, Stone Group took over the development from the first builder, who put the bond money in to begin with? The first builder or Stone Group? I'd have to look. I honestly don't know. Yeah. All I know is that the money's there. I don't know yeah. who put it in. Um, actually, I'll make a note here. Who? But we're in control of release of the bonds. Correct. So, and like I said, the only thing right. we have to be sensitive to is if it is actually, because this came up again, the right. streetlights, where if they have met the, the exact letter of what is in the plan, we right. are legally obligated. required and yeah. obligated to yeah. release that if we don't yeah. we could get sued and rightfully right. so yeah. yeah and the whole language with the street lights is furnished street lights it didn't say ownership it didn't say lease it yeah. says furnished street and lights and it's just it's just contract law so yeah you have yeah. 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 some group speaking on behalf of the nature way board that they created yeah yeah decided to lease street lights right Instead so, of put them in and pay right, for them of ownership, like they were right. supposed to. Right, but it meets the legal requirement of furnish. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I like, just as yeah. a side commentary, personally, I was not happy about that, right. but I understand the legal right. requirement of we have we have this and we have to do it. Yep. So. Thank you. No, oh. no. Yeah. Thanks, Dan. Thank you for the comment, Dan. We'll be happy to look into that and hopefully have some, some solid information for you and everybody else on Thursday. Butch, you have a comment. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I thought it's going to be on the program. No, oh, uh, it'll it'll be well, on the program. It, it is on yeah. the budget part. Yeah, yeah. Oh, this is about is the backhoe. Yeah. Okay, we'll get we'll yeah. get to the backhoe. Um, okay, seeing no other public comments, uh, there are nobody else on the Zoom session either. Okay. So, um, we'll move into the main items for discussion. The first one is the Stonecroft infield and sinkhole. Uh, this was a situation where the original drain basin had been made deeper, but is now not draining. Stone Group has started bringing in equipment, although we have not received an update on just the sinkhole in general and what they're doing with the infield. Uh, as we just discussed during public comment, though, we obviously will not close out any, any bonds or, or allow them to do completion of the project until that has been satisfactorily addressed uh, in both counts. Oh, yeah, cool. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. We have. Uh, they did bring in the equipment. Uh, they did uh, put in some more piping. Uh, they filled it back in, they planted grass seed in there. It's nice and green now. We don't have big, tall weeds, but not having any rain, we have no idea how the infiltration basin is going to work. Yeah. And currently, to the best of my understanding, it's kind of piped back into the pond. Yeah, so... We'll we'll keep. Thank you for the update on that because that's actually very helpful. We'll keep a close eye on that. If they try to to submit something that says like, yes, it's done. We did these things. We absolutely can can stay it a little bit and say like, we need to see this thing work. So unless you want to start pumping thousands and thousands and thousands of gallons into this thing, 
we have to wait until the next time it rains. Yeah, but we've got to so, considerable. Yeah. And we can kind of see where that water is going. Yes. Yeah, because it obviously didn't work the way it was designed the first time around. So, yeah, yeah. And then as much as I'm sure lakefront property is is a, a hot commodity in Stonecroft, we don't want that. I'm sure you don't want that either. Um, the HOA should talk to them too. I don't know if you're aware of this, but the other day, uh, a semi, flatbed semi with that equipment on it, drove down Copper Beach Lane. Uh, they were talking about that. Yeah. So I was stunned when I saw this huge, huge truck with heavy equipment on it on the wrong road. I mean, we've got all the Make signs in place to keep construction vehicles off of the I know. Yep. Drivers pay no attention to it. Uh, we back them out, catch him. We catch him coming in the front entrance and we back them out. Uh, I've made tractor trailer drivers turn around and go back in the opposite direction. So. We just keep monitoring. Yeah. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Cold Summit Farmers Preserve Industrial Park uh, Traffic Planning and Design. The project is predominantly in Mill Creek Township, Lebanon County, with approximately 1.4 acres that are within Marion. Uh, we are right now waiting for Womelsdorf Borough to do this traffic study, and we haven't heard much additional detail of any. Yeah, I haven't seen anything across my desk, but this this isn't abnormal for something like this. This is very much in the, the infancy, the early stages of this project. There's going to be a little bit of activity and then a long pause and then a little bit of activity and then a long pause. That's just the way these sorts of things work. So as we hear anything, we'll be sure to share with the residents and especially the residents of Stonecroft and vice versa. If, we'll, we'll keep you informed. Thank you. Thank you. That was, that was the ask is if you hear anything through any other channels or the course of just being around other places, other meetings, yeah. let us know because- We have a very active group that attends all the meetings, Rumble Store, Mill mm -hmm. Creek, and even in Lebanon. Thank you, Dan. And, and pass along the thanks to the, the residents for that, that level of involvement. It really is appreciated. Okay, next is the Act 537. Uh, the next step is to do the income study and the letter out, getting the letter out to property owners about the pump out inspection schedule. That was, um, I'll say, completed between last meeting and this meeting. We just need to lick them and stamp them and put them in envelopes and out the door. So we'll be working on that. And- uh, Well, now you marked up this letter mm -hmm. saying what's in the letter isn't what, in the, isn't what is in the ordinance. Yep. I called Alan, Alan said, you can always amend your ordinance. Yeah. And he doesn't think that DEP is gonna be too particular about okay the letter doesn't match or what we're doing doesn't match the ordinance he said as far as he's concerned dp is going to be happy that we're just starting the program okay so then like i wasn't even going to bring that up at the okay. um, well, i need to know what to do yeah well i mean I at, at this it, point I where i copying this letter yet where i left off with with kind of the, the group consensus was you were fine with that and I, i'm fine with it too my concern was the way the ordinance is worded is you have to pump out like this this zone note goes next year the next zone goes the year after that rather than giving people a four-year window, people aren't going to do this until the end of that four-year window. I, I can guarantee it. Well, and honestly, Alan said he, in his experience, he's going to send out, you know, we're going to send out our letter mm -hmm. and he's going to send out his letter. The people, I guess he sends out a letter every time, like district one is, yeah. you know, then he sends that letter. District When district two is due, he'll send out a letter. And he said, in his experience, the majority of the people call within the first three months and he said it's chaotic and there's no way possible administratively he can do whatever say 300 pump outs in okay. three months so okay so that was another reason why he wanted it okay extended so, for four years okay so i'm thinking does that make sense? It, it does it does okay. so from an administrative standpoint the first I know uh, we can talk to Alan, but I would assume that this is going to be predominantly a problem. The first round of pump outs that yeah. we do ever after that, it'll normalize. Yeah. Um, so if we're going to amend the ordinance at all, we should amend the ordinance to specifically call out the first uh, cycle of things. And then we'll fall back into that normal, like after you've been inspected, you can do it any time within the four year period. So it's, it's, a, it's a very slight change in wording. We can look at that before Thursday night, but that was my only concern. And like I said, where we had left off on the email chain is if Alan 
is okay with it and he's mm -hmm. his assessment his professional opinion that dep will also be okay with it mm -hmm. i'm okay with it that was just my concern is that we were communicating one thing and our actual mm -hmm. like ordinance said something else mm -hmm. So and this, I actually had pulled the ordinance up and read it to him. I mean, mm -hmm. he has a copy of it, and and he said, "I honestly, I don't think DEP is going to care that the ordinance reads different than the letter or what we're doing. Mm -hmm. They're yeah. just happy we're doing it." Yeah. So you're saying move the inspection, allow the inspections to be within. Well, that's that's what the letter says. Right. That that was put together. Um, is that if you're in, let's say, zone one, you have between now and 2023. So the, the first one, the first zone says between January 20, January 1st, 2022 and December 31st, 2025. So four years. Right. That's the letter. To get your first pump That's the letter. Right? The, so ordinance, the, ordinance the ordinance says, says that zone one is going to be pumped out in this year. Okay. From January to the December. December. 2022 and your suggestion is saying let them have that four-year window for the first time and then right. and, and we i don't even think right. we have to necessarily yeah. declare like the subsequent things because yeah. of the rest of the way the ordinance yeah. is worded that if we say the first during the initial pump out you will be given a window of whatever amount of time to make your first inspection okay after that it doesn't matter if you did it in january or march or december yeah it becomes on a uh, up to four-year cycle for you mm -hmm that you could get it pumped out a year later and have it inspected again if you really wanted to, but you don't have to for another four years. Like you don't have to call out dates because it just says that you're, this is the window for everybody that gets pumped out. From whatever you pump out, it has to be inspected again within a four year period. Okay. So well, he's worried He's worried about too many at one time. Yeah, yeah he's worried about an influx. Yeah. If you make this the first four years, they're all gonna wait until the end. And that's, of that's, what, I, right, that's right. what I opened with. It's yeah. like, if you say I have until 2025 yeah, to do this, that's a, that's a future me problem. Yeah. I'm not gonna do this yeah. until 2025. Um, so, I mean, the only thing I could say is if Alan is worried about the shift of things, maybe we narrow that from a four year to a two year, that would still hopefully move things around a little bit for him from a, a volume standpoint. Does he have to be there when they do? Yes, yes. he has to inspect the guys, that, the guys that used to pump me out when I lived in Leesport, if there was a problem, the guy that did the pump out told me. But they're not, yeah, they're not, they're not a license. license. They're yeah, they not an SEO. SEO. So SEO. the reason the reason that we we went through this and had the the SEO as part of the inspection process is just conflict of interest. If you have somebody that pumps you out, they're going to go. Yeah, you know, you're you're fine. Don't worry about it. Um, if it's a means of saving somebody money, or they may just sign off on things, or you could have kind of the counterpoint where somebody pumps it out and goes, "Wow, everything's messed up." It's like you got to replace the whole thing having the, the impartial third party, the SEO come in is really kind of the check and balance on that to make sure people aren't getting kind of a lick and stick on the inspection or the opposite that they're getting taken to town on like your system's perfectly fine, but I've told you, you have to replace it. Yeah. It's, but it's, but I don't know how, how does he even inspect it? Oh, so once it's, once it's drained, um, you can actually, uh, I've, I've looked at mine once and it's it. it's horrible and disgusting but the last time mine was pumped out you don't go down in it but there's a viewport and there's the main like manhole mm -hmm. you can look in there and you can see if everything's in good shape you can see the baffle you can see the the thing that actually lets it out into the drain field you can see if there's damage if things are clogged or if there's stuff collected on it and i think that's mainly what it is the it, baffles. yeah it's it's just making sure that everything is in good working order like when it's drained that you don't have a crack in the tank and you don't mm -hmm. see like water bubbling into it or you know any anything like that i, I hate to see us wait because they'll just all wait oh, that, and i i agree with you and uh this is an issue for Alan. Maybe he needs to hire somebody temporarily to help. Well, him. he has he has one or two other people, but I mean, we're not their own municipality, right? So, well, if he can't um, handle it, then maybe we need to look for somebody else. Oh gosh, no! You have done it. <laughs> no, it's just no. the reality of the uh, situation. No. All the problems we've had, right, right. The SEO and and, and, and yeah. when we were calling around, and and I asked, I got responses Nobody else right to from, do from it. five people, but he was the only one that said, "Plus, his billing is beautiful." Yeah, his his yeah. paperwork really yeah. is an art, but. And yeah. apparently DP likes him. So we want the well, to stay yeah, happy. I like right. him. I yeah. like him too, but right. I don't like waiting for years. Yeah, so right. so because, Jim because he can't see 300 of them. So like, so, so Jim, so which is obvious, anyone. you can't. So right. Jim, what I was saying is if we, rather than giving the 4 years cuz I agree it's a, a little bit of a long time, which is why I threw up the red flag on that post it note there. Um, maybe we talk to Alan and see if like, if we do this in like two year chunks that you have, the first one is two years. The next one is overlapped two years. So you're actually only like two zones, three years. 
three zones total of five years so that everybody would be pumped out over the next five would still spread it out a little bit from a volume standpoint, but it would still get it done relatively quickly. Okay, you, spread it out. Out. you make it two years. I, I, I know, I know. So I'll wait till two years. I mean, I, I personally, <laughs> if you don't want to send a letter out to me, no, I don't no, care no, 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 no. But I don't want you guys to look like I, schmucks. Yeah. Because they're going to get Alan's letter, and yeah. they're going to be, oh, the church yeah. didn't notify no, us. No, we we want to send a letter. We want to send a letter, yeah. and we just we need to. I've heard that from people yeah yeah like the township doesn't know about notify us about things i've heard that from people yeah, yeah. so i don't want you That's guys right. to look like idiots. so so yeah. what do we want to communicate to alan can we say just just let's you know can we do it on a two-year and instead of the four-year and can we send that to him in an email if we got his approval then we just change that language and then we get the letter out I mean, depending how fast we wrap the meeting up, we just try calling Alan. I was going to say, why don't you just try calling just, right just, Yeah. <laughs> I think you yeah. still have the same problem. If you make it two years, all the way to the end of two. Can we get him on the phone? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see if I have his number in my phone. I don't have his number. Thanks, See you, Dan. See you, Dan. Do you have a cell phone? Uh, that's what I'm looking. I don't know if I have it in my personal phone. Just let him know he's on speaker bar and being recorded. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't think I have it in my personal phone. Let me see if I have it in the email. Can we look? Uh, I'm sure I have it. Sure. Okay. So the expression give them an inch, they'll take a mile. Well, yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's pretty much yeah. it. And yeah. that was the, yeah. the immediate concern that I had is yeah. like if we one, it doesn't match the ordinance, and two, yeah. if we do this, then nobody's gonna do it until the very end. It's like yeah. when's your bill due? Okay, I'm not gonna pay it until the day before. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. Even if you make it two, they'll just wait for yeah. the two. They still have the same problem. Seven eight one. Six nine three one. Six nine three one. Thank you. Maybe we should do it by lottery right? address that's pulled out your first and your second. Yeah, year. but at the same time, you know, not everyone has money to do it, and you know, it's costly. So Really afraid that whenever he does, we do these inspections. Yeah, we're going to find that there's a lot of issues. Yep. yep. I think you're right, but that's why we're doing them. It's unfortunate, but I'm yeah. afraid that's going to happen. All right. Oh. I'll, I'll try back later. But anyway, that, that's my concern. The letter, other than that, the letter's done. It's just yeah. dialing that in, and that was the concern that I had. Was one. If push came to shove, whether it's residents or DEP or whoever, they could say you're not following the ordinance. Well, and that's why he said you can we can we can always amend the ordinance. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, you know, it's but, just a matter of doing paperwork. Yeah, you know. but I, I don't want to see him get swamped on things. But we are we are overdue for it. Just as as an overall generality, this is something that should have been done for years and years and years, and just hasn't hasn't happened. So. Um, I'll call him again. I'll actually, outside of the meeting, I'll leave a voicemail for him. But if it is a situation where he says like two years, are we as a board comfortable with narrowing that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I would say, Sue, let's preemptively change the letter so that it's the, the two year intervals for each one. And what I would like to see, and please speak your, any objections if you have them, is instead of having like two years, two years, two years back to back and having it being six years, I'd like to have the second year of the first group overlap with the first year of the second group. So that way you're actually only looking at like five years rather than six years in terms of the, the total time frame for the, the three zones. Okay. And I'll, I'll work with you on that. Yeah, because I'm not following okay. what you mean. Okay, so, so Sue, if, uh, if zone so one is- January 1st, 2022 for the first yeah, section. Yeah, so, so let's say section one is 2022 and 2023. Yeah. What I want section two to be is 2023 and 2024. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm in the process of copying everything else slowly getting that done yeah um but i didn't start copying this letter yet yeah or the map because i want to wait until when we get the finalized. letter finalized we need to take it to an outside copier we can't copy it in here because our copier our copier is, is terrible yeah. we'll take it up to jdm okay. no i'm printing stuff out on the laser oh okay and, you feel and then i was going to print the map the color maps out because you can't see everything with the black and white yeah i was going to use the new printer for those yeah 
I'm wondering if it would actually still be cheaper to have JDM do it okay. in terms of well, like. I already started copying letters. Well, okay. I mean, that, that's, a, that's okay. That's okay. I, I, I was mostly okay. saying the color one specifically because I think the ink cost is going to be higher for us printing that okay. than well, it is you, to. You've got to let me know. Uh, no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, if, if you did it, it's, you did it. It's, no, I didn't do yeah. the maps yet. Okay. Um, so I would say the maps, let's get the maps printed because I think it's like five cents or seven cents or something like that at JDM for a, a color. Okay. Um, rather than I'm sure it's going to be more than that in terms of what we actually figure out the ink cost to be per page. Okay. So. Okay. You let me know if it always helps out. Yeah, I, I might yeah. actually have some availability this week. So if we get well, that I'm sort copying, of. I'm, I'm printing them in like 50 page increments because sometimes yeah. the, the yeah. printer. Like, so if. It if, doesn't hold that much paper, plus yeah. it like gets a little funky right now. Have so. you printed a bunch of copies of the. The, the current newsletter. The, the new, okay, the good, newsletter. good, good, good. Okay. I started with that okay. first. Good. That that's going to be pretty much. And I have like three hundred done. I think there's like seven hundred eighty or something. Yeah. Like that that okay. the newsletter portion of it isn't going to change. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I started with yeah, that. Yeah. Before before we do any of the actual like on lot management notice, then we'll take that to JDM and just have them crank okay. that out real okay. fast. Um, okay. Uh, only other thing is we need to reach out to the, the lady. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. Very nice lady that we talked to that McCarthy engineer referred us to about the income study. Colleen, um, Colleen thank you. Something, um, Colleen, something. That reaching out to her to see where we're at in terms of getting that ready and what the next step is. Um, I'll make a, a note to give her a call or send her an email. Can't her last name. Yeah, it, it escapes me. It's, it's kind of superfluous at this we're, point we're on but, first name basis yeah. with everyone anyway yeah, yeah. by the way I'll, I'll send a line out i'll cc everybody on that okay. um okay next is to set the date and time of the reorganizational meeting for the board of supervisors this needs to be set on jan or for january 3rd 2022 which is the first monday in january and we must advertise this we usually have it at 7 p.m a motion will be required and must include the date time and to advertise so if everybody is okay with that particular date, which we don't really have a lot of choice in, I'll make a motion to set the date and time of the 2022 reorganizational meeting for the Board of Supervisors for Monday, January 3rd, 2022 at 7 p.m. at the Marion Township Building and to advertise it in the Reading Eagle. Okay. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Mike. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay. Next item is to set the date and time for the reorganizational meeting for auditors. This needs to be January 4th, the day after the Board of Supervisors reorg meeting. And we also must advertise it. Typically it's 7 p.m. Same rules apply as the prior motion. So I'll make a motion to set the date and time for the 2022 uh, reorganizational meeting for Marion Township's auditors to uh, Tuesday, January 4th, 2022 at 7 p.m. in the Marion Township building and to advertise in the Reading Eagle. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is the 979 William Penn Boulevard flooding. Uh, we are keeping this item on the agenda until we have completion on this. Um, there's been a lot of back and forth over the past couple of months on this. Just to recap, the pipe that goes across the road only it stops one foot short of the right of way. And there was some pre existing problems on the uh, residence property that was getting flooded and on the opposing side of the street's property. Um, the opposing side of the street's property has had a number of uh, updates and remediations made to, to help reduce flooding. Uh, at some point, we really should probably look at either replacing the pipe or at bare minimum cleaning it out, but we don't want to do that until one of two things happens, uh, specifically the cleaning it out bit. The property owner either needs to regrade a section of their property and we need to get written uh, approval to come in and do some work to dig out and excavate around where the pipe is, which exceeds our right of way, uh, or what the property owner has recently uh, reached out to McCarthy Engineering and proposed is to... Um, connect that drain pipe subsurface uh, and at their expense they're willing to run a pipe that goes around the outside edge of their property into a, like a settling basin so at this point we, we haven't heard anything past the preliminary drawing and the preliminary request we'll just have to keep an eye out for 
when the next thing of it materializes with McCarthy Engineering. But um, right now, we really can't do anything with it. The, the ball is in the property owner's court before we can proceed. Any questions? No. OK. Next is the Burke County Department of EMS. This is the statement of costs for 2022. Uh, 20, the twenty one thousand five forty six dollars and ten cents is a six point five increase for police, fire, and EMS dispatching services. Uh, however, if we authorize the new agreement, which is our next agenda item, our cost would actually be twenty thousand two hundred and thirty one dollars and seven cents. So it's significantly cheaper if we authorize the new agreement rather than doing it just kind of ad hoc. So. With that said, the next agenda item is the Berks County EMS dispatch services. Uh, we have been paying police, fire, and EMS uh, dispatch fees to the county annually, which are subject to an annual increase without limitations. It was decided uh, and is decided by the, the sole discretion of the Berks County commissioners. They have decided to fix the annual fee subject to increases based on the inflation index, and they require us to adopt a resolution and execute the new agreement to provide these dispatch services before December 31st, 21. Uh, Courtney will have the documents ready to go for Thursday night, so we don't really have to do anything with it now. Um, but just from reading over things, unless there's anything weird with the documents that Courtney identifies, I think we should just authorize it and be done with it on Thursday night. Okay, next is the Spur Road and School Road intersections. The asphalt has been laid. Uh, we will need to adopt an ordinance to put a stop sign at that intersection. Uh, as we talked about last time, the rules around stop signs are very specific. And one of the very specific things is if you have a um, less traveled road that's traveling onto a more traveled road, in the case of Spur Road, you actually don't have to go through that whole study and warrants and things like that. So uh, the stop sign is there. We just have to make it 100% proper with the ordinance. Okay, moving into road work, we have the culvert on Marion Drive by Jacob Weiss. McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate of $91,539.37 to replace this culvert with our road crew doing the lion's share of the work. Uh, we are currently awaiting permits for this project. Um, I'll cover the next two culverts and then we'll, we'll go into a couple of points around just culverts in general. Uh, next is the culvert on Marion Drive, north of School Road at Oscar Manbeck. McCarthy Engineering provided a cost estimate of $59,423.79 to replace this culvert with our road crew doing most of the work. We, much like the other one, are waiting permits for this project. And the la uh, second to last culvert is the culvert on Sheridan Road by Gerald Hoover's farm. We are awaiting the permits for this project as well. Likewise for the culvert on Reichert Road. So. We have a total of four culverts that we're looking at doing that are in dire need of repair and replacement. Uh, one of the questions that was asked, uh, I believe, by one of the members of the planning commission is for these, are we able to have the road work do, or road crew do the majority of the work? I think the answer is yes. The only thing that we may have to either uh, do a little research on or maybe subcontract somebody out or see if somebody like Ryan Allgaier would be willing to go onto the road crew temporarily to lend expertise is around diverting water flow. That's that's really the only complicated aspect of this. Otherwise, if we need to rent a piece of equipment to, to set an end wall or to do a box culvert, we can rent a piece of equipment. Or in, if it's a situation where we find, wow, we're not able to get a piece of equipment big enough, we can we can talk to a crane company, which is what we had to do on, oh, Sue, I always mix these up. It's not Hickory, it's the other one that we had to, that we had to have somebody like come in with a crane and reset the end wall like twice. It was um, down by the broad Rich, and gun. Richland. Richland, Richland, thank you, thank you. So if we run into a situation like that, it, it may increase costs slightly, mm -hmm. but it's done right. It, it's it's time. yeah, we may yeah. have to we may have yeah. to assess that and say, okay, we we can't rent a piece of equipment big enough to do this. Yeah. We need to have somebody come in and do it. And that's we'll have to do that closer to time. And we may have to just make sure that we budget with enough um, wiggle room there to be able to account for an extra, let's say like ten or fifteen thousand um, dollars. I just have a quick question. Sure. Here. So currently, all these costs have been coming out of liquid fuels fund. Do you want me to continue to pay everything out of liquid fuels? Because if that's the case, then I'll have to transfer funds from the savings into the checking account. So we have budgeted because the, the the state fund, the, the road right. fund, is pretty much all liquid fuels. Right. Um, we do have some money budgeted in the regular 
like general fund. Yep. Uh, 2021 had an amount of 90,000 budgeted. And that's uh, code 439, which I don't think we've had anything out of so Correct. far this year. Correct. So we absolutely can take stuff out of there. It's just, yes. If we have yeah. qualified expenses right. for road work, I like taking it out of the road fund rather than taking right. it out of the general fund. The only thing as I'm asking is because like- well, you, would, it, you would need a motion to transfer. Right. Yeah, would, yeah, yeah. It would, transfer yeah. funds from one account to the other in and order to pay for it. We're not gonna have so, any of these expenses until yeah. 2022. Yeah. So and there's about 300,000 sitting in the savings mm -hmm. and there's about 250, 260 sitting in checking that's gonna get eaten up with these uh, uh, top two um, yeah. projects. So. so when we get into 2022, I'm thinking we probably will want to move 100,000 or 150,000 out of okay. the savings into the yeah. checking because we had moved stuff around yeah. before because it just it makes more more money sitting in savings yeah. than it does in checking. But um, and then keep in mind, um, so Holly Fischel was at the Berks County Convention on Thursday night, and she talked about the ARP money and she said most definitely you can use that money for culvert replacement okay and then there was she said she had a question about um okay we can use it for culvert replacement can we use it to pay the, the road around the culvert can we use it for payroll for the replacing that culvert and she said yes okay so keep that Good in enough. mind yeah yeah, because we haven't designated any of that. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's good. it was fifteen thousand dollars less in liquid fuel funding mm -hmm. um, for this and she year. She reviewed that too, and that's mostly yeah. because of um, lack of people driving on the roads, COVID. Yeah, yeah. Um, but also because of the laws um, for more fuel efficient cars. Yeah, you know, electric cars, that kind yeah. of thing. And she said that will continue to trend down. Yeah, that's that's going to decrease wow. steadily as more, yeah. especially especially with the electric cars becoming yeah. very prevalent, which yeah. is kind of a good thing and kind of a bad thing. Yeah. Is there any FEMA money available for this? No. Not for this specifically, no, because yeah. that's something that we have looked at. And I know John has looked at yeah. relatively recently. It's of the things that we can do with FEMA. I think the only thing would be like if we had storm damage, yeah. like some of the stuff washed away, but our, we, we'd get into some serious hot water if we tried to use FEMA money to replace this because yeah. this this wildly predates any flooding that we've had recently. Yeah. Um, like the the one pipe, the, uh, the the steel pipe, they stuck the big like white concrete blocks on, and it's just it's crushing the pipe in because there's no actual support structure on it. They're just stacked right on it. So if somebody actually came out to inspect before we used the money and then after we'd have a bad time mm -hmm. we'd have a very bad yeah. time and you're announcing it to the public on the internet right now yep mm -hmm. yep <laughs> oh no no I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. open honesty yeah. transparency oh, we absolutely. can't we cannot in good yeah. conscience do yeah. that because it would be it would be fraud it yeah. would absolutely be fraud um so yeah i'm not doing it yeah so it would, none of these were damaged from all the yeah. any of the damage that we would have had would have been kind of secondary to it like yeah. some of the some of the boulders are, i know on canal road washed out so we might be able to get like fema money if we really chased it to get some some large like riprap yeah. and place it there but that's that's really the extent of it okay. and then keep in mind too dean was at the convention dean jerk miller from bccd and he said remember january 1st starts the new application period i think it's january 1st to april something for the Dirt and gravel culvert. Mm -hmm. yeah. thing, I mean, we have we have plans to run up for four so, of them, so yeah. we can we yeah. can put in all four and see what they get. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Good. yeah. Last yeah. year we did the one of the ones on Marion Drive, and we didn't get it. So yeah. my there was the one at Jake Line. Yes, yeah. Dean liked that project. So yeah, maybe. I I would say resubmit that yeah. one, and honestly, resubmit two of them. Yeah, we have four of them done. So resubmit yeah. two. If we even get one of them, that just means that we we already have the permitting in place. We already have yeah. everything else. We just right. kind of carry it over to the BCCD project. Right. Yeah. Um, All right. Lots okay. More stuff. Yeah, it's of. it's always yeah. exciting. Yeah. Um, trying to see if now I'll actually I'll cover it now because I don't see a, a bullet point for it. The line painting for 2021, I, I did get in contact with Bill Coker. Okay. Um, he doesn't think it would be able to be done this upcoming week unless he can squeeze us in, but he's hoping sometime within the next like two weeks okay. to be able to do this. Oh, um, the one thing that he has asked, because he had like the preliminary measurements, is the, the spreadsheet that I sent to you, Sue, printing that out and marking up a map. So you know, the, I know the one year 
the actual line painter guy stopped mm-hmm. in here and said, do you have a map that you can mark? Because they, they are not yeah. around. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, I didn't um, I didn't look at the list. Did you put on the triangle up at Christ Church at Blue Spruce? Did you put that on? <laughs> I don't think so. No. I don't think so, because we have... Um, right. I have it right here. No, I mean, I can pull it up too. Hold on. I hate coming down that section of road. I mean, I can probably, I can shift some stuff to have them do it, but. Just because we've gotten several complaints about that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the ones that we have for double yellow line painting is Reichert Road from 419 to Marion Drive, Church Road from School to 422, Smaltz Road from 422 to School Road, Smaltz Road from School Road to Host Road, which is basically the township line, Stouchburg Road from the township line to Kreider Road, Wintersville Road from Stouchburg Road to School Road, Main Street, William Penn Boulevard from 422 to the township line in Wilmersdorf. So that, that long run entirely redone on double yellow uh the actually i think the little oh, triangle do. i do the unnamed yeah. unnamed road 422 to main street okay yeah so that is actually on there okay. i i didn't click the name but yeah it is on okay. there um and then outside white lines uh wintersville road from stouchburg road to school road main street from 422 to the township line in Wolmosdorf. so from where the highway starts to where Wolmosdorf starts we'll have new double yellows and outside whites the whole way um we're also looking at doing a number of crosswalks. There's one at Sharp and Main, Water and Main, and Church and Main. So we'll have three crosswalks on Main Street, as well as um, one at Stouchburg Road and Ketterman Hill Road, and then two on William Penn Boulevard by Stonecroft. So the two intersections there, uh, William Penn Boulevard and Stonecroft Drive, and William Penn and Sundew will both have crosswalks. Question. Yes. Uh, no, we don't mm-hmm. necessarily no. have to. I was considering taking a little bit of time off specifically to make sure that they do Main Street right. A lot of the other roads are well, and, and if you're if you're able and willing to be there, I'll, I won't turn down the company. But that's the one that I, I want to make sure they do right because I don't want them painting it out where the cars are. I want them painting it at lane width so that it's right. visually more narrow. That it's still legal, obviously, but mm-hmm. I don't want the wide boulevard. Mm-hmm. I want it to be. Here's, here's where you're supposed to be driving. There's where the cars are supposed to be parked. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that, the combination of the crosswalks and anything else that we do, like with the, the pedestrian crossing bollards and things like that, mm-hmm. uh, will hopefully cut down the uh, incidental speeding. Yeah. You're, you're always going to have people that just floor it, but people that just maybe aren't paying attention and are going a little fast, hopefully that'll cut that down. Um, putting in the signs up too. Crosswalk ahead. Yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we absolutely it. can. I don't think you actually need, yeah, you don't need... need ordinances to do that it's mm-hmm. it's inherently uh part of the like the vehicle and like motor yeah. motor safety code um same thing with like the no parking here to corner like we didn't have to do extra ordinances for that because it's already technically that's the way it is you're just putting signage up to support it so once the crosswalks are in place we absolutely can do crosswalk ahead or like pedestrian crossing or whatever we want to do there yeah. very easily because then people will slow down hopefully yeah that. i also w- i want to double check because i know i asked yeah. about this years ago and i looked and i i, I don't know I, I still don't like or uh, i don't know if the answer is right but um i would love to put up more speed limit signs yeah and when yes. when we looked at it it was a situation where like you're supposed to only put them certain numbers of feet yes. and there's a minimum and a maximum yeah um i would I would much prefer to put speed limit 25 like all over the place so yeah, that it beats you over the head. One, two, this, in this direction. Yeah. When you're coming down that concrete section of up, boom, people are just Why? flying. Mm-hmm. And then you hit the first set of houses, you're like, oh, it's, it's 25. Yeah. Yeah. And most of the signs are obscured by a uh, 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 tree. The, like vegetation. Yeah. yeah. So I, I want to do two things. Like I said, I, I, I want to check what the absolute requirement is because i would much rather have more speed limit signs than less personally um and i also still need to get an answer for some companies that do road work about the rumble strips because i think the rumble strips are going to be very helpful when people come flying off the highway at like Mm -hmm. 80 miles an hour that that's going to immediately alert them to like oh hey i need to i need to pay attention slow down so 
I think it, it's not one silver bullet that's going to solve the problem. Right. There's a bunch of little things that we can do that will help yep. drive down instances of it until you have just that select group of people that are just going to fly through there anyway. Um, and then that's where we, we try to have the police yeah. sit. I, so. I didn't look through that pamphlet that Jim McCarthy sent over for traffic calming. I looked through it. There's yeah. there's some good information in there, um, but a lot of it is, is stuff that we're either trying to do or is not really applicable for what mm -hmm. we're trying or the, the kind of road that we have on Main Street. Mm -hmm. um, worth reading if you get yeah. a chance, read it. But I think this is going to be extremely beneficial that you don't get things like speed bumps, stuff like that, that are yeah. problems otherwise, but will help cut down the, like I'll call it the highway hypnosis yeah. of just I'm going the speed and that's how fast yeah. I'm going. Because it is a very nice, wide open, relatively straight street. The temptation is to just kind of pick up speed. Yeah. But we just got to make sure that it is, it, it itself as a road is doing all the things to try to discourage that. Um, one of the other things we can do, and I just haven't had a chance to do it, is get the speed sign out. Yeah. Um, that's a kind of double-edged sword because yes, people see that and they go, oh crap, I'm going too fast. And then there are some people that are like, how fast can I get going where yeah. the, spine, the, the sign will register? We challenge it. Um, so Do you have a weight limit on Main Street? No, actually. I mean, that's, we had talked about that before about putting stuff up so that we only had class two vehicles go through it. Um, I'm not opposed to it, but I think when you do that, if it's a, a certain like amount of traffic on a, on a daily basis. You have to do a study, which is not the end of the world, but just something to consider. Um, but I actually, if, if you're interested in that, that might not be a bad one to see if we can reuse the stop sign study that I've asked McCarthy to, to kind of kick off, see if we can do the same thing for at the triangle there that says like no class two or no vehicles over oh. class two except local delivery. Mm -hmm. yes. um, let me make a note of that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I bought some at MSI. Did you use those already? Yeah. Okay. I mean, we have some, but we need some more. Okay. And and uh, another thing, I need some stop signs too. Okay. So we have we have uh, refacing for the stop signs. There's a bunch of the decals. Uh, I used them all. Oh, and, okay. Uh, and, Good. Uh, the guy down at uh, Birmingham there, you know, he was selling to me at a good price. He says, you can't do decals. But first of all, I don't have no, no stop signs. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. Yeah. So after the meeting, let's connect and get kind of an inventory of what's in there. Because I know I bought some 25, some 35, some 45s recently. But if you've already used most of them, let's let's discuss. No, I didn't, I didn't use the, most of them. Well, I mean the twenty, specifically the, the twenty fives, but yeah. and the stop signs. So if we need to get more signage, we need to get more signage. That's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, but I, I definitely need stop signs. Okay. Okay. Note made. Okay. I'm thinking if we put a weight limit on that road, that'll that'll cut down the yeah. amount of large trucks that'll and take, farm equipment too that'll take care of that cold storage problem <laughs> yeah. too. Do, possibly do you really think that the local farmers are going to even pay attention to that no but it is enforceable right. then yeah that if the police say like there's no you, you can't exceed a certain weight limit and you have a like thirty thousand pound tractor yeah. like full of like manure going down the road like yeah. you can't do this um that's the difference between like people complaining about it and act, it actually being unlawful is yeah. if we have an ordinance but and the what signage happens when the trash truck goes through town would that be considered a local delivery technically like they're picking no, things that well, it would be a question for yeah, the solicitor but know. um there are there are usually <laughs> there are usually exceptions to that that are kind of inherently built in exception yeah yeah yeah, no, yeah that's that's choice. necessary but we'd have to talk <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they drive through. They just don't pick anything up. Oh, jeez. Um, yeah. <laughs> they do that already. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's pretty much business as usual. But okay. Um, so that that might be a good question for the solicitor is if uh, trash trucks. And they could always be an exception. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, that that may yeah. inherently be a thing. Yeah. Like municipal vehicles are not applicable for this, and then trash trucks by extension are a municipal yeah. service. So, okay. Uh, next up is the. And I, I kind of lost my, uh, there it is, the Topahawken police. police contract. 
Um, we need to make an addendum to the agreement, which expires the 31st of December. We're waiting for Tulpa Hawkins' attorney to review this. Courtney will also have our documents ready to sign, hopefully Thursday. So as we had talked about last time, that is just kind of a change around that so that we're, we're proper going into 2022. Um, next is the Eagle Disposal contract, like we were just talking about with the trash trucks. The three-year contract expires on the... Uh, 21st of March, 2022, with an option to renew for one year and an option to renew for a second year, making a total of five years. For years one through three, residents pay a quarterly fee of $50.40 for trash and $16.80 for recycling, totaling $67.20. For year four, the quarterly fees are $52.65 for trash and $17.55 for recycling, totaling $70.20. For year five, the quarterly fees are $54.90 for trash and $18.30 for recycling, totaling $73.20. They have been uh, they have provided free trash and recycling totes in the past. Andy drew up the documents and McCarthy Engineering posted them and penned it. Um, this would need to be authorized and advertised if we do choose to go out for an RFP. I only put it on now so you can talk about it and mm -hmm. talk about it because, I mean, we have a little while yet, but... Yeah, so um, one of the things that there's has... There's a period where it needs to be advertised for so yep. yes. long or something. I don't know. It's a drawn out period. And... Yeah, so there's been a number of complaints over the past a couple of years. Of um, one of the things that we have noticed recently, and this had not been the case before, is the recycling tonnage has dropped which kind of corroborates some of the complaints that we received that they are just throwing recycling in with the trash. I mean, right. this past month, it was half. Yeah. It was right. less than half. Yeah, and, and I, I can't I, believe that many people right. are not I, recycling. Right. And I we know been, from Dutch Valley has given us considerable amounts mm -hmm, more. Mm -hmm. So it should have been, mm -hmm. it should have been more. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I know just no, from- No, no, Dutch Valley gets rid of their recycling themselves dumps. and then they give us a Give us a report. Oh, yeah. Okay. So they're, yeah. they're not in, in, right. involved okay. in that. But I know so, just yeah. personally, I have recycled that full tote and then some yep. Yep. every single yep. time they collect. That's and I, I refuse to believe that we had that much of a drop off. Yep. Yeah. Half. Coupled, I mean, coupled with the complaints, it yeah. is it is one, one or the other, yeah. maybe a little suspicious right. together. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to talk to Andy or right. Courtney, talk to the solicitor about invoking some of the penalties on the contract for yep. non performance. Yep. And I'd also like to authorize them to put out an RFP so that we have we have the option of renewing the contract. There's nothing that says we can't if we choose to do that for cost well, reasons. We need to review that because I believe, I don't, I believe the households or the, I think that needs to be changed. I mean, Stonecroft has their own contract, yep. um, but I think the, because when Eagle took over, I was getting phone calls saying they didn't pick up my trash, but they weren't on the list. So the list needs to be updated. Okay. I yeah. think they have the number of, I can find it real quick. No, I want to say it's like four or something. Um, and the list that I did for the pump out letters, mm -hmm. I think we have 780 properties. Yeah. So I don't think that this list is up to date. Yeah. And does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not to mention they, by the definition of the contract, they're supposed to be collecting trash. Like for example, if somebody doesn't pay their bill, they're still supposed to collect the trash and then seek payment. It's supposed to be the same way if somebody is putting trash out and not actually paying, they're supposed to try to get payment from it. They're not supposed to just not collect the trash. Okay. That's, that's the way that is specifically worded. Um, I have the date wrong. It's March 31st. March 31st? Okay. Hypo. Yeah. Okay. So mild correction, the end of the contract is March 31st, not March 21st of 2022. Um, but with that said, I think we should, we should try and remediate whatever the issue is via the contract right now, because by price point, it's, it's good. The service has some, some aches and pains. Hopefully we can remediate it because if we put this out for RFP, my fear is it's going to be considerably higher, like considerably higher. Yeah. Um, I still think that we should put it out for RFP just to see, but we may be unpleasantly surprised at what comes back. Right, right. Uh, but it's, Everybody it's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's that tonnage and, and it affects our recycling it, grant. It and does. so, you know, we could say, what is, 
was the average amount of tonnage that you've received in months That's past not, and you know could we not, them to recompense us I think not to mention difference. not to mention from an ethical standpoint oh i'm a God. huge supporter of recycling so if right. it's just going into a landfill that kind of annoys me on a personal right. level but we don't know uh, we don't know on their ends what has changed yeah. but it, it shouldn't affect us contract wise unless there's an addendum to that contract yeah so they're if they're if they're kind of taking it out on us that we need some remedy yeah so would yeah. you be able to send me the recycling reports mm -hmm. okay because what i want to do is i want to throw this onto a, a graph mm -hmm. so that we can see a trend mm -hmm. um and i'll depending on when i get that from you i'll have that for thursday night that we can see it because mm -hmm. my my knee-jerk reaction to this from just kind of paying attention from talking about it single single months at a yeah. time we're probably going to see a relatively stable trend right. up until about mid this year and, and then it's going to start to Down slowly yeah. tail off i can't remember yeah, yeah. Get them now? oh no yeah. don't get them now we'll do that later yeah. but i'm i'm just my yeah. my my knee jerk reaction to this like i said is it's probably been stable for the majority of the contract and it's just it, it dipped has. off it's, like sometimes it was like fluctuation of 10 yeah. plus or minus but, but and never, that's horrible. never this yeah, much 10, yeah i think the one i, I can't remember. i want to go by my memory but but this this month when i got it i was like Five thousand tons? Like what the heck? Yeah. yeah. When I have the data points, I'll put <laughs> yeah. it onto a graph and I'll see where things fall, like yeah, in, in the bell curve format of things. Project this, so we could like look at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like so, we um, have we have the projectors. The problem yeah, is the, the there's lighting. so much ambient yeah. light in the room that it just gets washed out. Yeah. Um, and we don't have the like the wall isn't set up to yeah. to show it, so you kind of lose it. It just kind of eats it. But. Yeah. Um, um, and you have a copy of all the emails that you've sent to Eagle, and yeah, they're still in the yeah. And you computer. Have, I mean, I don't get rid of them. Yeah, and you list the residents who called, or like do I, you, I list the property address, and then okay. we try to list the yeah. name. Um, so, so we have a good have, promise yeah. to to send to mm -hmm. the attorney, and it, it's it's in there. It's in the contract. I've read that contract like three or four times now. So. Yeah. Which would you want to add? Uh, would Would you consider uh, putting uh, recycling things here? No. No. God. No. <laughs> I don't, I don't, uh, yeah, I, I want, well, they I did want that them to years ago before we had, before we signed, before we did a trash and recycling mm -hmm. contract, yeah. um, I think it was, yeah, yeah I, because you had your own hauler, yeah. you could bring your recycling here, but I think that was sort of like sponsored by the county, yeah, I'd, I I'd much, say, and it, it was, it's just these huge, 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 yeah, I, just yeah, from a, a kind of thing. from a, a um, space and a liability standpoint i would much much rather have people put that out in their their own bins yeah. on a, a weekly or bi-weekly basis yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's, yeah. No, it's a fair point it's a fair point it's yeah. a fair question but no I'd, I'd rather have people just put it out rather than have to drag yeah. it all the way down here and then some, some people will and some people won't yeah I, I know that. Yeah. some people don't even want to recycle them. yeah i mean all the trash is supposed to be put trash is supposed to be put in a bag in your toter mm -hmm. yeah. recycling can be loose yep. and i don't know that's if that's how they pick recycling yeah. out i don't know but still well, i mean you get a bags burst so that's like yeah. if, if that's the way they're doing that that's yeah. questionable yeah. at best yeah. Yeah. but a lot of people uh, just uh, the trash they just threw it again anyways they're not putting it in a bag mm -hmm. yeah yeah, I mean, you can tell people the best way to do things. They're not always going to listen, but exactly. whether it's residents or whatever, the only thing that we have to deal with is the, the contractual relationship that we have with the hauler. If they're not meeting the, the terms of their contracts, we have a couple of things we either have to do. We either have to exit the contract, invoke penalties, or find a different service. So yeah, we need to, I think we need to talk to Andy, yeah. see what we can do. And then we need to put the RFP out and see where we're at. Because if we can get a comparable, a comparable service everywhere, everywhere complains about trash. Like just to throw that out there, not all the complaints are the same, but universally, no matter where you live, there are people complaining about trash. So you want me to tell Courtney to check out what we can do? What we, what we can do in terms of penalties in the contract for non-performance. Specifically, if you want to tell her about the, like, they're not, it's they're not collecting trash. recycling, they're just throwing it in the garbage. Um, and then, I mean, that coupled with everything that we've had with like the spills and not cleaning up and not in collection and all that stuff, uh, I think we have a pretty solid stance okay. on that. Okay. okay. Next is the semi-consentennial for the 
Commonwealth of PA in the USA. This is for July 4th, 2026. Um, we have an email from Paul Jansen from the CELG. They would like all municipalities in Berks to pass a resolution supporting the PA Commission for the USA Semi-Consentennial. According to Paul's second email, we may or may not decide to directly participate, but are not required to participate. Courtney will have these documents uh, prepared for our review and ready for Thursday night if we choose to sign them. Okay, next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendments. Uh, this is for Robazonia Borough to designate convenience store with fuel pumps as a separate distinct use in the town center, highway, commercial, general industrial, and light industrial zoning districts. This will also provide use specific regulations, including parking, vehicular circulation around pumps, placement of ventilation equipment, setbacks for fuel pumps, maximum numbers of pumps, et cetera. This, the convenience stores and fuel pumps must be owned and operated by the same entity and no repairs may be conducted on site. Our planning commission recommends that the board of supervisors accept the amendment conditional upon the res resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission's comments. For North Heidelberg Township, there was an amendment uh, proposed for the apartments in the medium density residential districts, uh, having an average lots areas of 7,500 square feet. We have not gotten any comments back from the Berks County Planning Commission. However, our planning commission has recommended that the Board of Supervisors accept the amendment condition upon the resolution of the Berks County Planning Commission. Uh, for Heidelberg Township, a change in their parcel for Agricultural Preserve District to Medium Density Residential District. This parcel is 25 acres with an address of 620 William Penn Boulevard. It is located in both Marion Township, roughly 14 acres, and Heidelberg Township, roughly 11 acres. The portion in Marion is already zoned medium density residential, so there's no change needed on our part. The Berks County Planning Commission has reviewed this. Our Planning Commission recommends that the Board of Supervisors accept the amendment. The next Joint Planning Commission is Thursday, 11-18-21, uh, so November 18th, which is unfortunately the same night as our Board of Supervisors meeting. So un unfortunately, we will not be able to be there, but just from this, there's very little that is directly applicable to us. Actually, I think technically speaking, nothing is directly mm -hmm. applicable to us uh, if we're just usually supposed to be there for voting purposes. Mm -hmm. um, so if we don't have any additional questions, or comments, or concerns on that, I'll move on to the next item, which is the rental inspection ordinance proposal. This will allow access to rental properties every other year. Uh, we did receive a copy of Richland Borough's ordinance, and we had discussed that a little bit at the last meeting. Um, I think we're waiting. I, I called Wilmersdorf and I emailed and I haven't gotten any. That's okay. I was, yeah. I was just about to say, I think at this point, we're just waiting for some other ordinances so that we can really tailor ours to be the most helpful, yep. but least, um, least imposing or punitive uh, for, for yep. just basic stuff, just yep. to one, satisfy basic common sense and some of the concerns of the, the residents that have spoken yep. up at the meetings. The goal here is to protect people, not make it difficult for, for landlords. Yep. And again, just to reiterate, from reading through this, what's required and what some of the other ordinances have in it, it's all basic safety things. Yeah. Things that if you stayed somewhere, you as an occupant would want to make sure that oh, yeah. your safety was observed. Yeah. And that's that's the core yeah. of it. That's beyond what the core of it is. Yeah. So we just want to do our due diligence and make sure that we're doing this and we add a, a tool in our toolbox to help people, not hurt people. Um, at our next meeting, mm -hmm. when we introduce this, can you just give a brief overview of what the point is in very simplistic terms? Yeah. Because I think some residents are very confused as to what this is. I think they think we're going to be going to their personal residences and trying to regulate it. And I think yeah. that's where some of the hostilities come. And I guess I, I just as like a little caveat to, so once, if, if we pass this ordinance and we have this inspection, I think it would be kind of neat if we could issue a certificate mm -hmm. that this property has been inspected and if people could or they want to display it inside that rental property this way people renting know mm -hmm. that it's been done well let me tell yeah. you so i don't know i don't know if it's in here because i didn't read it um for Wilmersdorf, you have to fill out an app as a property owner you fill out an application yep and then they issue you something. I can't yep. remember. It's kind of like the certificate is, of occupancy. It's, exactly. It's, it's saying that you did this yep. and your your property passed inspection and yep. that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, I mean, even if it's something right. as simple as the rent, the renter provides it to the rentee. They don't have to have right. it like hung up in the building. But right. one of the things that you could give them when you sign like a rental agreement right. or a lease right. or anything like that is like, yeah, this passed inspection. Because right. mm -hmm. people um, like pretty things. Mm -hmm. They do. Yeah. Not to mention yeah. it's good. It's just good documentation. Yeah. Um, 
So yeah, I can I can say something because I, I think you're right. I think maybe yeah. there's a misconception that we're going to start going right. in and inspecting right. people's private residences, right. and that's not the case. Right. This is if you're renting a property out for right. like the the way that the one ordinance we looked at is like if you're renting it for more than five days a year or making a profit on it, then you're a renter. Right. You have to meet basic living requirements and safety requirements in order to do that. It's no different than if you own a restaurant. You have to meet exactly. certain food exactly. safety things in order to be able to give people food. Right. If you are living in that house and you're not renting it out, not within scope. You're not going to have exactly. biannual inspections. If you're if you own a property and you have a relative living in there and they're not paying for it, it's just you're you have a relative living with you in a second property. You are not by definition a renter. This is not something that is going to be inspected. If you have a property that is sitting vacant and you're not renting it out, you are not turning a profit on it. People are not living there. Not applicable. Right. Um, that there's a number of things that I think people just hear inspection and they 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 get right. the torches and the pitchforks out, and right. it's it's not the case. It's if you were running a property as a business to let other people live there, right. then then yes, you need to have it inspected every once in a while to make sure that you don't have uh, hazardous conditions with mold right. or your ceiling caving in or outlets that are not GFI when they're directly next to a sink, um, things like that, smoke detectors. Mm -hmm. um, basic, basic things that you should be the doing anyway. Right. Yeah, it, the furnace right. works, that right. you have heat, that you have water, that it's not dripping, that exactly. you know, your subfloor is, is, doesn't have a yeah. hole in it that somebody's gonna fall through it or something. Right, um, and in some ways it actually, it, it can protect the, the owner too, because let's say they have someone on, on the premises, it's two years and they have what conditions were at the onset of, of that agreement, and now we come in to inspect and things have deteriorated where the, the rentee is actually the one who's destroyed the property, mm -hmm. caused, caused the problem. So it gives them some kind of um, avenue for them to address those issues, but also do it properly. Not so, to mention from a liability standpoint, yeah. if it's inspected for safety and then something happens, you yeah. have that as an additional yeah. layer of protection for like, I did my due diligence. Right. It, it received a passing for for safety right so i mean there's there's a number of there's pros and cons right. like with anything in life but I, I honestly i personally feel the pros far outweigh the cons if yeah. i own rental properties like yeah nobody likes spending money but it's it's a way to make sure that everybody has the a certain baseline level of safety absolutely and sometimes yeah. you have to go through some some stuff to make sure that everybody is is doing the right thing. It's the same thing like we talked about at the last meeting with speed limits. Yeah. If if everybody drives safe and to the conditions of the road, you wouldn't have to have speed limits. You wouldn't have to have signs. The bottom line is you do because some people go too fast. Yeah. And the only way that you can enforce it is if it's actually an on the books law. Yeah. I guess it, so so we have to give a very simple explanation as to what this is and what it affects. And then I guess the other side of that argument that people keep on barking at us, well, I should be able to do what I want on my property. It's my property. It's my business. And then it's giving that argument, well, it is your property, but we all can't do what we want on our properties because it affects the rest of the public. Mm -hmm. So I know Sue and I were talking about what kind of a oddball scenario. So let's say I decide to open up a butcher shop on mm -hmm. my property. I had no... Um, Inspections, no nothing. It, it, there's no quality control of the products that I'm, I'm using, no health and sanitary inspection. I dump all the, the guts and stuff in my garbage pails, however I want their stench. I'm selling this to the public and I'm making people sick because there's no regulatory system. Well, if you're telling me you could do what you want on your property, then I could do what I want on my property, mm -hmm. even though the stench and the illness that I'm causing in the community. I'm just trying, like, I'm just trying to like give like an yeah, offhand, like, oddball kind of a thing. And from a high yeah. level, I completely, right. I completely agree with the, you should be able to do what, what you want with your own property. But there, there's a within reason right. asterisk on the but end of that one. it affects the other, public. Exactly. Right. When it's other people right. or it's a safety thing. Like, right. believe me, um, codes, that, codes exist for right. a reason. Right. And unless you're somebody like, Sue, I've, I've, taken out tons of permits for things yeah. that I've done on, on my mm -hmm. properties. Mm -hmm. I take the time to review the codes, read the codes, and then make sure the stuff that I submit to craft is a hundred percent to the letter. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, not everybody is going to do that. Not everybody does. Not everybody yeah. does that. Right. Right. So there, there's a very good reason, even like, well, yeah, I'm just going to do something at my house. There are guidelines for a reason so that you don't inadvertently like burn your house down by doing your own electrical right. work or like flood yourself out by doing plumbing incorrectly. Like there, there's an art to each one of these things that 
unless you either really know what you're doing or really want to put in the time and the effort, you can be very unsafe about right. it doing doing what you want with your own property. Yeah. It's conveying that message to the public and mm -hmm. people, I'm this, I'm that. Yes, you may be, but we're doing this not just for this particular mm -hmm. instance. We're doing this for the group as a whole yeah. because everyone always screams my rights, my rights. But I think us sitting up here, it's our obligations. Yeah. And it's a, it's a different kind of, of fitting. Yes, we're respecting your rights, but what is our obligations to you as well as the community at large? Mm -hmm. And I think that element has been missing when we've been discussing this particular issue. Yeah. And if, if I miss something yeah. like that, please step in. And yeah. uh, I think oh, you, we've done a yeah. decent job of it, but to your oh, point, yeah. we can, we can yeah. hammer this home a little better. Yeah. Some people just get um, so heated. You know, and in the past it. five years, since I've been here, we've had several complaints about from renters mm -hmm. about there's been two in the past like year alone the conditions inside yep. the home or apartment mm -hmm. or whatever and you know at, at that at property maintenance doesn't cover that so well, there, there's some things in ipmc about that but the problem is you can't go into a house right unless there's been a formal complaint right. lodged and you have permission to enter the the, right. the occupant space right like we have, it's a, it's, we have a little bit of power there, but it's very, very specific. Whereas this gets us in the door right. to be able to see the things that are wrong and then directly action. Right. Yeah. And I know specifically with the hotel issue, when we asked Courtney, she said she was going to look into other things that would cover that particular issue for us. Yeah. So. Cause that's, there, there are some complaints that were not related to that but that's one of the ones that anytime it comes up whether like there was a, a uh, ems related situation there the fire department i know a couple of them personally said stuff to me and i got stuff secondhand as well that like the stairs the staircase up mm -hmm. to the second floor mm -hmm. was basically being held up by a hope and a prayer mm -hmm. and they were like we we didn't think we were going to be able to get up the stairs level well, and get the Chris person Kershaw down came in that one time and said that staircase he said, I'm afraid to go up that because I'm afraid it's going to fall. Yeah. And, you know, so I think that's been remedied. But yeah. Well, I'm, I'm just saying perfect yeah. example is that is yeah. they're, they're in kind of an area that kind of falls outside of a mm -hmm. lot of what we already have covered. So we, we absolutely, like, I would love to find out from Courtney what we have yeah. to do to, to try to remediate that a little better. Um, but mm -hmm. that's, that's certainly not the primary use case for the rental inspection ordinance, not by any stretch of the imagination. Mm -hmm. The goal is to make sure that we're keeping people safe, yep. and I, I hope people realize that. No, they don't. They, they, they and I, I think I think that's what the the biggest argument that we're, we're we're encountering. They just see it as a personal front, and so I think we need to kind of at the at the meeting say, okay, this is why we're doing this. Yeah. It's not specifically targeted against you. This is in general. You're not the only person in this room yeah. or in this community. Well, it's it's yeah. like the, the I think a good example is the garbage collection. We yeah. require garbage collection from properties because by and large most people would probably hire a trash hauler and have their stuff taken out it's that very small subset of people that are irresponsible that would just let it pile up in their yard or dig a hole and bury it or, or whatever it. or burn it yep. and we had one of those in town the yeah. trash was blowing down the street so yeah. yeah it's unfortunately it's the one bad apple that ruins it for the bunch but we have to make sure that in making sure we don't have that happen that we don't have it be overly burdensome mm -hmm. or restrictive or punitive for people that are doing the right thing mm -hmm. and, and that's that's why we we mince and macerate and talk about this kind of stuff yeah. at length is to make sure that we don't have a situation where we put something on the books and go ah oh, crap the unintended consequence of this is is insane mm -hmm. so okay so now that we've hit that Thank point you. pretty hard Sorry. Uh, no 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 it's okay so i'll 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 try to give that the the best explanation possible uh, at the simple, next meeting simple simple, simple short. words yeah yes. <laughs> uh but i may call on either one of you to to help maybe dial that point in because it was it was fairly heated the last time yeah yeah um, I, I think there's a big misunderstanding i think there's i think this there's partially a big under, misunderstanding i think she's the, the the person that was making the comments is just vehemently opposed to any yeah such regulation like that yeah. but uh, we won't get into that that brings up a good point somebody at the last meeting mentioned that they were going to somebody else another township meeting they were not permitted to speak because they weren't a resident we're allowing non-residents to speak at our meetings is that so if you live here it's it's a slippery slope like she might not yeah. be like officially living here but if she lives in the township like to me she's a resident and 
whether it's, I'd love to see no, no heated conversation, but whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, I'd much rather deal with the occasional bad thing no, or, or unfortunate yeah. thing and keep the open dialogue. Yeah. The public meetings to me, I've, I've been to public meetings before where it's, it's very closed. You have the section for public comments right at the beginning, and then you're expected yes. to just that's clam it. up. That's it. Um, that's one way of doing things. That's not my personal style of doing things. I'd, it's, it's a public forum. You have one yeah. or two times a month where you actually can effectively, uh, other than if you just call one of us individually, but, uh, or call Sue, there's really only a, a select few opportunities where you can have your voice heard in, in the public governmental space. I don't want to silence that, whether the person's a resident or a non-resident. Um, with that said, if we have somebody that's a non-resident, that's just coming here and shaking the cage a lot, then we have to kind of bring that into account and go, okay, this person's just kind of, kind of rabble rousing. Yeah. Um, that article but, was in the uh, latest township magazine was interesting about how since the, the post pandemic people's attitudes have gotten a little crazy. You know, yeah. Are that first meeting that we had back, that was, that was a rough one. Screaming yeah. at each other. And, yeah. And it's true. It is true. It is true. <laughs> We've forgotten how to be kind to each other. Yeah. We've forgotten how to work together. It's yeah. all about me, me, me. Yeah, we can talk about things, but do we have to scream at each no. other about it? No. Yeah. Because <laughs> you immediately tune it out when you do. I do. Yeah. Okay. Um, Try to I get angry and, and pound my fist against the table. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it when you get angry. <laughs> yeah, it livens things up. But yeah. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, winter snow removal. It's time to start getting the trucks ready for winter snow removal. Okay. Um, we need to get an updated list of the farmers for emergency uh, snow removal, and uh, I want to get a meeting set up. I fully intended to do it uh, this week, but um, I have not had a free chance to do much of anything over the past like month. So sometime in the next two weeks, I'm going to start making some phone calls and see if we can't get everybody here on a Saturday to make sure we have like the, the plows on the trucks, the chains are all ready to go, that uh, the salt spreaders work. Um, if we can have some of the, the newer people on the road crew take some of the trucks out and get familiarized with them, um, possibly have the grader out to, you know, give people a crash course on how to use the grader so that it's well, not just we, like Dave. You appointed two people to road crew and yes. they never brought their payroll packet back. So okay. technically they can't work. Okay. So let me know who they are and I will mm -hmm. chase them. Mm -hmm. Um, but the goal here is to get everything ready, get as many people as possible familiar prior to the snowfall. Uh, and one of the things that I'd like to do is I want to look at a map because like I have a route that I use when I drive around to, to minimize double backs, but I want to go through that with Butch and Leon, Kevin, Dave, and see if there are, if there's empirically a best way of doing this. If we have three people doing it, we know we start here, one well, guy goes one I way. They sort of have, each have this, their own zone area. Yeah. yeah. Right. I th and I, I think that that exists, but it, oh, it's known uh, by... Butch yeah. and yeah. Leon and Kevin, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I want to. I want to try to coordinate that so that it's on paper. That if whoever takes the little truck out does this specifically, whoever okay. takes the big truck out does this specifically. And there's always going to be a little bit of like sometimes you have to improvise. Um, but I want to try to keep it as consistent as possible because it's going to be that much easier to go. Okay. We noticed uh, the roads are, are not plowed yet on Tulpy View. Who was supposed to do that? Who had the little truck? Is there a problem? Um, things like that. So sometime in the next couple of weeks, I'm hoping to get that set up for a Saturday afternoon. I'll send something out to the group. And for anybody that doesn't use emails, I'll make some phone calls. But uh, want to get that ready. Are you, you going to write up an SOP? Yes, that's that's the goal. There'll be a new binder in the that's, office. That's the goal. SOPs. So, so one of the things that I, I have partially done, I had sent this out before, is I'm going to start tracking road work in in a sort of documented format of like road work in 2021 consisted of these projects, and then what the projects were. I have like Hickory from the prior year. Um, I have to get some pictures from the oil and chips so that I can put that in there. But tracking year over year for that. Uh, but also having, like you said, the SOP for yeah. specifically road work. This is the stuff that you do to prepare for winter. Yep. These are the things that you do during uh, snowfall events. It this is what you do to close routine. down yep. so that it just becomes a routine thing. Uh, after you you take the truck out and you're salting, uh, weather permitting, it should be power washed within the yeah. next 24 hours to ensure that the frame doesn't start to rust. 
like things, things like that. Like once a month, check the wiper blades to make sure the wiper blades aren't yes. bad. Have spare wiper blades in the truck. Yep. Um, having a, a, a checklist of how many times a year the oil is changed and when it was changed or what other maintenance. I really want to get this into a prescribed format. What What's being done is effective, right. but we need to make sure that it's effective routine every time. And yes, yep. it needs to be routine, reliable, consistent, yep. and repeatable. Yep. Yep. Are we going to have one chief in charge of snow removal this year? Uh, so we can certainly appoint that. It's been uh, a lot of gracious help from, from Dave Stabi. He did an excellent job with that last year because I was working ridiculous hours around Christmas time. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to like Butch or anybody else doing that if we want to have one one person calling the shots. Because really, in my in my view of the role, um, roadmaster, you can do more, you can always do less, but really should be kind of the executive opinion. Like things like getting the grants together, right. authorizing projects, going out and you know helping with certain things time to time, getting stop signs if Butch says like, hey, I need signage, placing the order for the signage. Yeah. But at the end of the day, the the, the big big input that we need is the people that are actually out driving, doing the work. So if there's one person that's kind of the, the leader on the road crew, I have no problem appointing that person. We just need to figure out who best that would be. I think by just sheer availability, if Butch is interested in that, that would probably be Butch. I agree. Um, and you and I can yeah, have a- Yeah, yeah. appreciate what Dave's talking did by his peer yeah. group. Uh, he, he, he was great mm -hmm. uh, on me at all. And, and he was willing to do it. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. Please. And I, I've said it before and I'll say it a hundred times since, but please pass along my thanks to the day for that. That really, really yeah. did make a, a huge difference last year. Do you want me to call um, Tony and see if he's up for it again? This yeah. Time? That'd be, that'd be great. Yeah. I'd appreciate it. Um, but we want to make sure that we have everybody coordinated because I know I, just I think it's important that, yeah, there's one chief, not, yeah. Not yeah, five yeah. Indians. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And I, you could always call John too, but John doesn't have a CDL. We don't. We yeah. only need that for the, yeah. the big truck. Yeah. Um, and John, because John, um, generally, if it's a bad storm, he can't work, so he's yeah. stuck here. So, yeah. And, and he Josh likes it. Bellman <laughs> was in complaining about trash a few minutes ago and wanted to know where you turn around and the trucks and stuff. So he's very interested in helping the plus. Now he was appointed to road crew, Good. Um, but he doesn't have a CDL too much. Yeah. So yeah. He can just drive a little truck. Can, can we put this stuff on the website too? Do you mean like the turnarounds and the process uh, and the uh, SOPs? Looking, and looking for CDL drivers, possibly, mm -hmm. but you don't want to. I mean, okay. we could put an open, <laughs> I mean, just open ad up. But I only it would say be that too because, much. so we're in the PSAT CDL program, and, okay. and, and that's a whole other issue. Okay. So, I, I, okay, got it. Uh, yeah, because then they have to go for all the drug testing yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 I mean, we did that before. Apparently, before I started, they advertised and got nothing. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, we advertised looking for people for road crew. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and yeah, we didn't, was, we didn't get anything. Yeah, we actually, yeah. the two people that we appointed yeah. this year yeah. were just yeah. happenstance. Nobody, yeah. Yeah. like actually a couple of people answered the, the ad, but they weren't interested at the, well, the wages. See, Luke Trotman yes, has a CDL uh, and so does Dave Patrick, yeah. but they didn't hand in their payroll. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I, I believe Luke is going to hang easily. Okay. And after the activity, sir. Uh, all from school this year. Okay. Sport up sports activity. Okay. Because Frank told me uh, that uh, the school gave him a lot, a lot of work to drive the activity people around. Okay. okay. Yeah. After all, I see. Yeah. Like so, basketball teams and football teams. Yeah. And I mean, it might just be a simple phone call for like, hey, just to get ready for winter, can you turn your, mm -hmm. your packet of stuff in so that you can, you can right. drive a truck with a plow on it? Right. Um, and they're generally closed, yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, so good. Uh, next is building maintenance. Uh, we are still actively going through the review of trying to compare what building maintenance on this current property would be versus uh, potentially breaking ground on a new building. Yeah. We no, don't really have 
Yeah, we don't really have any updates there yeah, and that's that. still yeah. still in motion. I'm going to just bring in some larger paper and you guys can scribble down or draw or whatever and we, we could collectively come up with some type of a project and I'll start getting numbers on that and still pursue numbers on repair of this place. So it's just it's it's getting so frustrating. Yeah, it's it's not going to be a quick thing. No, like but but nobody calls back. I've yeah. list, I've pulled yeah. over thirty contractors, and I'm and my I'm extending my scope now into like Lebanon, and and it's just getting ridiculous. I I feel yeah. I feel the, yeah. the pain and the frustration. I did the same thing with the like the roof and soffit work. Oh, I can't God. tell you the number of places that I called, and I got maybe ten percent back. Mm -hmm. Okay, next is the PSATS life insurance plan. The PSATS is offering a new life insurance plan. Uh, the design starts on 11-2-2021, uh, so November 2nd, uh, offering $25,000 term life insurance policy. Cur currently, we are only enrolled in their disability insurance. So I would say let's read that over and see if that's something that is I of personally interest. don't need to be enrolled in life insurance. Okay. Um, I, I just have, you, have you looked at it? Is it yeah, the only, so we got this. I wasn't even sure if I should give it to you, but I was like, well, I guess I should. Yeah, we have somebody so who does. We what, have somebody who does insurance on the board. Yes. Yeah, this is what, and it's in your packet if you look at your Google Drive scan things. That's what they gave us. And I did notify. I asked. I emailed the lady at PSAS because I'm like, I don't even know if we have. I know I filled out something, but I don't know why yeah. it was. And it's only short-term disability yeah. is all we're enrolled in, yeah. which is whatever. <laughs> well, yeah. Jim, give us yeah, his Jim, opinion. Jim being yeah. the expert, yeah. we'll let him look at it. But I, if you can sit, I see plan one, plan two, plan three. I need to know what the plans are. Yeah. And if this is guaranteed issue or not, I don't know. I'll look at this. Thank you. We if it is a guaranteed issue, I'm doing it. And 25000 I don't know why they're doing that either. Yeah. Uh, do you, I could do go, you want to call her yourself? Because you know the question is I, yes, I, I mean, yeah. I can give you a copy yeah. of that. Yeah, I'll give you a copy of that. Not, not to be gruesome, but 25 is enough to put you in the ground. Well, that's enough to put you in the ground. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. but typically, you can yeah. do as high as $100,000 guaranteed yeah. issue to forget the health any yeah. health issues mm -hmm. and uh and then usually there's a buy-up available beyond that now there may be some health questions for the buy-up um, but yeah i'd like to look at it yeah. make sure yeah, it's you can, you something can, that you know the question yeah. 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 how many hours opinion. i assume it's at least 30 hours I, i'm just like life yeah. insurance yeah. versus cost and we only have, <laughs> yeah. okay. have part-time employees so does yeah. it apply only to part-time or full-time yeah. or either well, so, I mean, yeah. we're on the short-term disability yeah. and we're all part, you know, yeah. we're all part yeah. time. Yeah. So, so you could give I, us your, your opinion on it and then we could see who would like to have it and if people okay. want it, then. We'll, yeah, we'll I mean, it may be it. a situation where we don't do anything or it may be an yeah. opt-in. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. Or just give everybody the option. Yeah. If, yeah. It's, if it's, if it's especially if it's guaranteed issue, just give them the option. Yeah. Because the, the rates were pretty inexpensive. Okay. Uh, that's a good rate. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Next is the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, $100,848.79 uh, $100, was transferred to the general money market account. PSATS expects the U.S. Treasury Department to issue final rules during the fall of 2021. We are still uh, awaiting the final. However, there have been some updates on some of the things that we can and cannot use the funding for. The date for the annual report was moved from October 31st, 2021 to April 30th, 2022. Uh, we will still need a uh, resolution to amend our 2021 budget to reflect the the income. And I believe we handed that to Courtney during yes. the last meeting. So, yeah. so we just we still need to approve that and then actually publish the amended budget. So let me just add: um, at the convention Thursday night, Holly Fischel was there from PSAT. She, of course, discussed part of the ARP thing, and uh, one of the things she said was um, they're still waiting for Treasury to give final rule. Um, uh, they have been finding that um, Treasury is expanding, broadening oh, good. their roles now. Oh, um, uh, she said she had an e I guess a couple of emails saying, can we use this money to put a culvert in? She said, absolutely. I just said that. You know, it, does it cover yeah. the um, 
road work around the call road payroll. Yes, it does. Um, yeah, I just forgot what I was, I was going to say. That's okay. When Go you on. think of oh, it, you yeah. let us know. <laughs> yes, please. Bottom line is oh, it the, looks... Um, the, um, lost revenue thing. Oh, uh, yes. Um, so she said there is a calculator on their website, their homepage. Um, she said, even if you think you only have a small amount of money as a lost revenue, she said, go into that calculator and do it. She said, you'll be surprised how much money you're going to come up with. Um, she said, she thinks it's worth doing it. Have your information ready. I think she said you can use 17 and 18 as your base years, I Ooh. think she said. Okay. She said it's on the it's on the instructions. Um, and then because it projects like a not a cost of living increase, but it's like similar to that. It's, yeah, inflation or something. Yeah, yeah. And she said you'll be surprised how much money you you can plus any any mm -hmm. money you any money for lost revenue can be used on anything. The one concern that I have is just remembering the budgets from like 2019, 2020, 2021 even. Um, we have actually, prior to COVID, we've seen a, a upward trend of yeah. revenue. Yeah. So like, even if we lost revenue in 2021 and it, are really anticipating a downturn in 2022, we probably are actually higher than 2017, 2018. Yeah. So we should certainly still do it, mm -hmm. but we may not, we may not find that by, right. by projection, we've actually lost any right. money. Right. Right. Next time I'm down here with you, we'll take a look at that. Yeah. And so we could be confused together. And then I know there was, a, just, <laughs> there was somebody on the discussion yeah. board. So just have all your information with you when you're doing this, cause it's really confusing. So I know there were discussions too about, um, they were, people were plugging numbers in and they got this like exorbitant amount. Is that really true? And then Holly said, yes, that is true. Like the projection is what, you know, what it's true. Yeah. Um, so anyway, like that, those were like the two main things that I got out of her. Everything else was kind of old news. So, yeah. Okay. Next up is the credit cards. We have received the credit cards. A policy and procedure needs to be drawn up. Uh, Irene is working on this and sent out a draft. Uh, I think everything looks good there. There's just a couple of little, little things that I might want to tweak some wording around, uh, but the core of it is, is very good. The, it, it outlines what the card can and cannot be used for. And uh, the, the note in there about having a, a signed and notarized attestation, I think is, is great. It's something that we absolutely should do. Um, so we'll have to, to work a little more on that and get that to the point where we can actually start having these signed uh, attested to, and then be able to start using the credit cards the way that yeah. we're, we're intending to use the credit cards. I mean, just, just like in general, I, I know I mentioned earlier in the meeting, if there's anything, any of you guys can think there should be a policy or a procedure for it so that we get things just standardized so that it, it, it's, it, it's done. Like, this is the way you do it. But if you want to think about it, take a crack at writing it, please do it. I'm going to put another binder on the shelf back there. So we just have it in alphabetical order. It's easily accessible for everyone. And this way, just moving forward, like there's no questions as to how to do you know, certain things. You know, we got to make things standardized so that no one's reinventing the wheel every time mm -hmm. so that the, everything runs smoother. So, I mean, Sue and I are keeping track of all the audits, all these online forms that have to be done. And I've been writing everything up and putting everything together so that it, it's a no brainer. So it's not like, Oh, what's this about? No, this is here. This is there. You have a question. It's in the book. So one of the other things that we should work on just collectively as a group, myself included, is the employee handbook yep. that we should have a handbook that outlines clearly what and how you're supposed to do timekeeping, observing general safety in the office or out on roads. Some of the things that the, the secretary does and the expectations therein about like hours of operation, uh, response time for phone calls, voicemails, emails, things like that. Uh, same thing with the road crew, just kind of the, the general requirements of if you're out on the road, that you're, you're wearing the, the safety equipment that has been provided by the township, that you're, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this, that, and the other thing. We need yeah. to get that outlined and in as well so that we have, again, yeah. just a documented standard. What's the easier format for you guys? Word. Is word? Word. Okay. So mm -hmm. I kind of sort of started taking a crack at that. So I'll do my best to get that done in Word and start. We're looking at 200 plus pages probably. So I'll start doing that little by little and sending it as, mm -hmm. as much as possible. 
I should say, I started reading other handbooks and seeing what we could put together. So, okay. No, I don't know. That's just me. I don't know. Oh, God, the next one. Yeah. Next yeah, is the okay. payment of yeah. engineer and attorney fees. Uh, this is for things like review of stormwater uh, plans. Currently, we are sending out letters and invoices. Uh, second invoice includes a 6% increase. This process should be tweaked and modified a little bit. Courtney was going to check how far back we can go to send bills and uh, if we can have an approved or if we can hold back an approved permit until a bill is paid, a prior bill is paid. Did you so, all get the memo from that I, she said? I think it's in I yes, saw I it, but I didn't read it the whole way yeah, through yet. I marked the wrong date. But anyway, so um, apparently we can go back three years. Okay. Okay. So 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 let me just let's rewind a little bit. So what happens is there's a project in town and the engineer does work or the attorney does work. They sent us the bill and we're basically like the pastor. So if it's done out of residence um, and it involves our, our attorney that impacts the township, we have to pay the um, engineer. But now what we're doing is we're billing that resident for work done for them. And so what's happened is we found out there's lots of years that, that these items weren't being billed. Um, if you want, we could go through smaller projects, but the big thing is actually Stone Group and everything's on Stonecroft. And McCarthy sent us a nice chunk and they estimate it's about $25,000. I can tell you so far what we've built for, I want to say it's between the six to $8,000 range. We've gotten back around $4,000. Um, and um, I'm getting familiar with how our computer keeps track of it and it's working pretty good. I have a couple of hiccups and I've been trying to get hold of Rick to help me through with that because it, 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 there's a, a balancing part of it that I'm having a little trouble with on the computer. Um, but now we've run into a problem where we have a resident who has had work done and we're paying the engineer but he is not paying us. And so now we're up to almost $2,000 in services that he's been um, provided with, billed for, but they're not paying. And I guess I understand there's another permit. We haven't held the permit, but he has not come down to the office to pick up the permit. And that's in here. Did I get yeah. this on your packet? Or I can't remember if I got this before I scanned or not. I think I scanned this in. So now we have... We have three individuals who have had work done. I've now sent letter number three. And so there's a 6% increase on each of those letters and they have not paid. And we're looking at the sum of over $2,000 in fees. So um, I did speak to another township treasurer that I came across. And what she suggested was, she said, well, what they do is they do letters one, two, and three. Letter number four is from their attorney saying, by the way, you know, this has come to our attention, blah, blah, blah. She says, usually that does the trick. In that particular township though, they have other methods of halting services. So they would halt services until that person would pay those bills. So I don't, we don't have that kind of control nor would I feel comfortable doing that. But again, it, it, we, we gave Courtney the information. She's gonna tell us what we need to do. Yeah, and I think probably we're, we're looking at recovering anywhere from ten to twenty thousand dollars a year with these services. That's a significant amount of money. So, and this says, uh, I mean, this is yeah. she had somebody from the office yeah. do it. So this says that Marion can suspend or revoke an issued permit for a violation of any provision of this ordinance or any other applicable law. Okay. So apparently but we, we can, can. That answers yeah. that so question. Yeah, pay assessments would be a violation of the ordinance. So, so then the next can. the next question is, I, I think it should be letters one, two, and three. Then we ask Kozlov Stout to issue a letter stating, this is the bill that has not been paid. These are the letters that have been sent on these dates. Your permit is now revoked. You can no longer pursue any further work. You'll be in violation, blah, blah, blah. I, I think we need to take that step. But we also still need to make sure that they're aware that whether the permit is suspended or not, yeah. the fees that have, or the expenses that have, are, are still, still, still pending, yeah. that you must pay these off regardless. Yeah. And uh, then if they still don't pay, then our final step is probably pursuing collection agencies slash lien against their property. Yeah. 
stuff. I hate to be that person. I, I don't but, like going down that route, right. but it's like the, the rental ordinance. We right. have to we have to prepare for right. essentially worst case scenario. And right. I, I think much like the road crew stuff and everything else we were just talking about with the handbook, we should write out a oh, yeah. standard operating Definitely. procedure for for this specifically, so that whether it's us or anybody else on the board, it is done a very yeah. specific, just, exact right. way every single it's time. It's predictable, and yes. understandable. And, and so, but as a taxpayer, I don't want to be paying fees for somebody that's not paying their bills. No, like, I, no. I'd much rather $20,000 yeah. of the yeah. taxpayer money go towards things like a culvert yeah. rather than somebody's personal yeah. project. Yeah. So. So, so, so this is where it's getting ridiculous. So is it stone group that owes this money or is stone it? And, and a number of, 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 of individuals in, in the township now. Okay. So that have had uh, permits approved and, and the work has been done, but they're not reimbursing us for it. So I guess we have to be careful there with stone group versus HOA versus well, this is this is the this yeah, is the construction. It's, it's, it's not the HOA. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, you've got three different. Forgive me. Yeah, this yeah. Is yeah. The yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's the builder. It's, so some yeah. group is like the parent company, and then right. landmark is the builder. Yeah. Right. Um, and then Stone Group. Yeah, and we found HOAs right. like it's and, and yeah. Yeah. you don't get yeah. permits or anything. Yeah. And most of these fees yeah. are for like. Um, somebody builds a chicken barn or two and mm -hmm. has inspections by McCarthy engineering. And then we get billed those fees and then these fees should get passed on to them. Right. Yeah. Or um, what else is going to say? Um, yeah. It's, it's things like the subdivision and land development fees yeah, or and storm, storm yeah. water and right. things like that. Lately, the big thing is the storm water. Yeah. McCarthy reviews just about everything for storm water yeah. runoff. Yeah. And then we get built that and then we started billing we should be billing back. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. are. Now. Yeah, yeah, and and that and that. And I just put up a sign that said something to that effect. Yeah, um, I haven't called craft, but all I did check their website, and mm -hmm. all of their permits for every municipality they deal with are alike. Okay, that must have just been something weird with. Like yeah. I said, I know somebody that yeah. lives over in like the Wilson area. Yeah, but, I mean they're all alike. I mean, you know, almost everything has a zoning permit. Some of them yeah. say deck and porch, and some of them say patio or yeah. yeah you know whatever but um but anyway so i didn't call them to see if we can get it put on that um so i thought i'd just hang the sign up because the yeah. thing is not some people get the permit application off of craft code's website so yeah. right. it has to be it, it has to be consistent right yeah yeah like so, not everybody comes in here or i yeah. email it to everybody yeah, yeah. So it just, everybody's it's, understand they, with that they mail maybe builds additional fees mm -hmm. associated with their project mm -hmm. very end of the statement mm -hmm. So I'm going to take a look at what Courtney sent us. Um, we'll write up like an SOP over, you know, once, twice, three strikes, you're out. Mm -hmm. The fourth is a letter from the attorney. And then fifth is collections. And we have to find a collection agency. So I will try to do all this before our next meeting so we can have something to, to review. This might so. be a good opportunity that like the next point is yeah. like the fees for like the saldo yeah. and the stormwater and everything else. Part of that SOP, one of the appendix items would be the fee schedule. Okay. I think that would be a, a, a prime place to put that because then, okay. you know, here's how we're billing, here's how we're collecting. And these, these are the actual fees that are, are in play on this. Okay. Um, so we're moving on to item yes. number 25. Yep, going on to 25, the updated saldo fees and stormwater management ordinance fees. Um, they're very outdated. The subdivision and land development ordinance is from 1991. The fees are from 2005. Stormwater uh, is from, they're both from 2002. Uh, Jim McCarthy did send us a copy of Why Missing's fee schedule. Um, I looked through it, but I haven't gone through like, okay. and done a red line on okay. it. So, but, so did you get, you got the Excel spreadsheet that I put everything on to, Jim? Yes. Yeah, okay. So it's quite a bit, and there's a lot of stuff that, oh, we won't charge for that. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think we definitely need to look at that, adopt resolutions to um, uh, have those fees in place. Um, some of their fees were a little bit less than ours, but they also have a larger population, mm -hmm. and they also like probably do a lot more projects than what we do. Um, so, I, you know, and it really was quite minimal as far as some of their fees, but it was a really big list. It took me like two days to kind of recategorize everything and compare apples to oranges uh, with some issues, like we don't have a pool or all this other stuff. Mm -hmm. So I didn't include some of the stuff that really just didn't pertain to us, but it's something really to, to look at and, and mull over. I have the, the copy printed out on the desk from the Why I'm Missing um, fee schedule. They have resolutions and, and they have ordinances that pertain to some of their 
uh, fee. So it's something like we need to look at, we need to pass, we need to really go over and it. And I agree with you, it needs to be part of like an annual review. Mm -hmm. it, it, this shouldn't have gone we just unchecked. need to, we need to yeah. get into the posture yeah. of any of the fees. Honestly yeah. speaking, I don't know if we want to do that at the reorg meeting because of yeah, everything no. else that goes on. But, but once annually, a year, once a year, we yeah. should go through and say, yeah. okay, are the fees appropriate? Or should yeah. they be going up because of like inflation and cost of living? Right. Should they be going down? Um, I'd love to see things go down, but that's usually not the case. Right. But we should be reviewing them annually to make sure that we don't find ourselves in this exact situation where it's yep. been 15 years since they yep. were updated. Um, it's boring. It's boring, so, but it's a, it's a necessary yeah. thing. Can I take a five minute break? Absolutely, absolutely. Out. So while we're waiting for Irene to come back, um, Jim, you probably didn't get a chance to see it. I sent out the budget this morning and I'll, I'll slide the laptop over so that everybody can see it. But it's, um, it's set up so that if we change things, the main sheet will recalculate. Um, the only thing that we have to, that I didn't have offhand that I may have to ask Irene for is what our assessed value, like total property assessed value is going into 2022, because that does affect the, specifically the revenue component of it. If we saw total assessed value go up, obviously that means we get more tax money in. Mm -hmm. If it went down, then kind of the opposite. So right now, just the initial number crunching based on what we had uh, from last year, I made some initial projections around things, things that are kind of a, a monthly sort of thing, like the telephone and internet. Um, I took a, an average month cost and did it for 12 months. Since we're 10 months into the year, I just took total whatever we have here to date divided by 10 times 12. Mm -hmm. um, anything that I know is kind of an off the cuff one time thing, or in the case of like postage that we're gonna be sending a bunch of letters out, I left it at, uh, either what we're currently spending, if it's not something we're gonna do more of or something that we're anticipating a use, try to project what that was. Postage, I put 500 bucks. We've spent hundred bucks so far, figured $500 is probably, if we're gonna be sending a, a boatload of letters out, pretty reasonable estimate. So with that said, the way the current accounts stand is the streetlight budget for next year, we would be undercutting by about $1,600 which is actually intentional. Uh, as we did last year, we have a, a surplus in the account. We saved a bunch of money by switching to the LED lights. So we're trying to bring the overall balance of that account down. You, you didn't miss anything. I was just yeah. going to kind of a recap about the sheet. Um, we're trying to bring that balance down a little bit so that it's really about the $5,000 mark rather than it was closer to like nine. So yes. that, one's, that, that one is going to show up as a negative number. And that's, again, that's by design. The, the road fund, because we didn't spend really anywhere near what we were planning on this year, we're, we're actually uh, positive $41,000. The proposal for 2022, much like last year, is a big fat red number. And that's because we're planning to spend far more than we're taking in because we have the surplus that's built over the past couple of years. Um, the one that we need to pay attention to specifically, and Irene, you may, you may not know the answer to this offhand. Um, we need to get the figure for what our, our total assessed value is for the township because that's that's um, I, that's that changes every year. Get that from you call somebody usually, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I have that in drawer. Okay, if you have it, awesome. Uh, yeah, otherwise, it, okay, sure. Um, otherwise, the general fund we have a shortage of about fifty one thousand dollars anticipated for next year, so we're, we're going to need to tweak some things mm -hmm. specifically to make that a little more balanced. But like I said, the nice thing about this is if you change the uh, proposed, it will it will recalculate what is in in here. Yes. Okay. What's the number on that? This good filing system I got here. <laughs> I knew exactly what you wanted. I didn't have to. Assessed value one one seven four six two yeah, nine hundred. So it's yeah, okay. Oh, it's for so twenty five. Twenty twenty. We won't get. What, we have twenty twenty ones. No, I guess I have to send her an email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well then, yeah. we need to get that because that's yeah. going to influence. All right. Thank you. I forgot. Um, I'll put that on the calendar. 
Check something actually. So what's the bottom line? We're gonna hold be able to hold taxes. What was that? Are we gonna be able to hold the taxes? Are we gonna be able to hold or the taxes? Gonna have to go up? Uh no, I think we just need to structurally adjust a little bit on certain things, Good. up or down, depending. Um let me, let me check something real quick. Yeah, just things if you remember yeah. put under calendar, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. I just, I just, I calendar because again, like last year was like a learning process, mm -hmm. but now you know I know what I'm doing. I think so. Yeah. So the the big thing that we need to check first and foremost is that assessed value, because like I said, the assessed value is going to tremendously influence what we take in or in yeah. anticipate taking in for for revenue. Um, so leaving the pro or the uh, real estate taxes at what we had budgeted for 2021, which was a, uh, an amount of $234,925 and 80 cents. So okay. for a year to date, we've taken in 2000 or excuse me, $222,877 and 90 cents. Right. And we know we're going to be short on the interim taxes mm -hmm. by the amount of $7,433 and some change. Okay. So I was actually, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, the real estate interim taxes, uh, yes. code of account 30160, uh, we only had 4,000 budgeted for that. Right. But we've received, oh, we've um, only received $526 and 22 cents. I don't know where that's the information that we got from the County then. So I don't know if it's interim taxes or other taxes that includes I, that. I think well. it would probably be, other? it would be the, the aggregate. Aggregate amount, yeah. Because there's there's no way that we can be short no. seven thousand on the interim tax. No, no, yeah, you're right. Um, because I have that in the email. Do you want me to go pull the email? I mean, you can. Otherwise, we yeah. can just do that as as homework after this. The, okay. It's yeah. little little things like that are gonna. It's gonna cascade. Email. So we need to rebalance yeah. based on on that. But for the most part, with the exception of like real estate transfer taxes. Uh, we had budgeted 30,000 as an anticipated, we've gotten $49,334 and 77 cents. So we've, we've actually taken in far more in that category than we originally anticipated, which is, which is good. That's the best kind of surprise to have. Um, same thing with earned income taxes, um, or I should, shouldn't say the same thing, uh, kind of the exact opposite in that same sort of vein. Uh, we have budgeted about $130,000 for earned income taxes year to date we've taken in 69,119 so it's considerably less uh, even as a projection if the current trend of earned income taxes stays we'd only be looking at an income of $82,943.12 so we're we're significantly lower on that than we were uh, originally anticipating and that's that was a budget item that has stayed the same year over year for the past 3 years that it, we were solvent in 2019 and 2020, but 2021, I think largely because of COVID, uh, we've seen that much of a drop in earned income tax. Uh, everything else is pretty straightforward. Uh, the only cable TV franchise, we're at $10,090.97 for a year to date. We budgeted about 12,000. If you take a month over month projection of that, we're realistically looking at about 12,000. It's $12,109 and 90, or excuse me, 16 cents uh, for the 2021. So that one's pretty much right on the money. Um, the, big, the big areas of concerns is for next year, things like zoning permits, uh, construction like building permits with a lot of the, the big projects like the Stonecroft area winding down, we're gonna see a drop off on that. So in the past, we've budgeted, like this year, 2021, we've budgeted 20,000. We've taken in 47,000. By the end of the year, if, if there's a, a linear trend on that, it would be somewhere in the neighborhood of 56. But honestly, I think it's safer to just assume that we're not gonna get much more new building permits between here and the end of the year. Um, so my, my suggestion that I put on the sheet was let's leave it at the 2021 amount of 20,000. I'd rather, 
underestimate on income and overestimate on expenses and have it balanced that way and be pleasantly surprised rather than the other way around. Okay. Um, and that's really, that's the big, big items of notes. Uh, I, I really strongly encourage both of you to look at the, the sheet and poke at it, mess around with it. It's, it's very friendly in the sense that if you change the proposed column, like I said, it'll change the one that's on the main like overview sheet. Um, the thing that's really going to tell you what's going on is down at the bottom, the differential, the 2022 proposal tells you if we're, we're plus or minus on that. Um, the one thing that I did want to ask you about, did we not get any state grants this year? No. Okay. Cause we, we had budgeted a 135,000 as a, as an income for that. And there were, there were no entries yeah, for that. Yeah, we, we didn't get any okay. grants. State grants would be what? We got our liquid fuels. We got our turn back allocation. But I, I mean, we didn't I'm actually hold on. I'm wondering if that's I'm wondering if that's like the BCCD stuff. I was going to say like the only other money we. Got I'd have to look back at the codes, but now that you yeah, say that, that might be it because that was there were a couple things that jumped out at me. And there was that was all in 2020. Yeah. Um, and we didn't get any of those this year. The yeah. foreign fire insurance, it's not on here because we haven't like um, gotten gotten the check. Yes, but we did, yeah. well, I mean, like by yeah, the time um, you had spit out the uh -oh, reports, it wasn't on there. Eleven thousand and change. Okay. And that's under fire. That's under yeah, it's three fifty five oh seven is the income, and then we have the expense that when it goes out the, yeah. the fire company. Yeah. Um, but that's the only thing that I didn't have in that that export. Gotcha. Uh, so I have that one highlighted. Um, otherwise, if we move into expenses, uh, most of these were pretty straightforward. Um, we are going to have to tweak this a little bit because, like I said, we have about a $51,000 shortfall anticipated for next year at, at what we have current spending. Um, one of the things that I noticed is we had originally set up code 400.33 for communication, website, and multimedia, but it looks like there was an additional code of accounts also set up, 409.48. Uh, all the... Wait, 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 wait. Okay. Yeah. So these these two, this this was the original one, four hundred point three three. Okay. Um, four oh nine point four eight is the one that uh, looks like you had set up. Um, uh, and that's probably because it follows the code of accounts that's provided that's in the office. Okay. So four oh nine point four oh nine point four eight was the one that was in the the export that you gave me for like website multimedia. Uh, well, we have it on here. Okay. So we need to check that because I personally, I prefer yeah. that we change the code of account so that it's the 400.33 because that lines up directly with the other communication code of accounts that we have. Yeah, it was in the export that you sent out the email. But that's largely semantic. So um, there's like $1,700 in that and we originally had budgeted 5,000. So we're, we're good there. Um, the one for telephone and internet, I think some of the expenses for the website, yeah, that was the or, yeah we're, were originally aggregated into that account because we're at about $2,500 now. And if we do a projection between now and the end of the year, it's about 3000. So we're a little over the budget there and way under the budget by almost 50% on the other one. So I think it was a situation where it got allocated to yeah. one code of account versus the other. Yeah. Um, and I can't, I can't look at anything on that because you have the, I have the keyboard, keyboard. so um, yeah so with that said like I said I have that highlighted and I have these in orange that so you can see them from the other the yellow ones is just I like I have it on this and I have it in email I can pull it up in email yeah that's just weird okay but yeah that it was on the on the export you you had it just was, is the last one that I sent to you yeah it was the, the most recent one Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so anyway, that's the only thing okay. I called out is there's there's two things. I, I didn't see anything on your... Yeah. Uh, we didn't bill anything against 400.33. 400.33 was the one that received the $5,000 budget. Okay. Whereas 400.9.48, or excuse me, 409.48 um, was the one that had the $1,794 expense, yeah. but no budget for it. So I think that's just, that's a that's a clerical thing that we need to need to sort, but huh, I'll um, that up. yeah. Um, otherwise, uh, advertising. So let me put that in there. Where I got that seven thousand dollars number from? That's going to bother me until I figure that one out. 
Yeah, otherwise it's it's pretty much standard. It's pretty straight across the board. Uh, the one that I had a question on is for dues, subscriptions, and memberships. Okay, um, so that was a big jump up because of we had to update our QuickBooks. Okay. So that's a three-year type of a thing so that we can expect that like every three years to have a big jump. And per your, per your note that you had sent the email, I set that to 450 rather than okay. 250. Um, so that one's a, a good call out for um, the, the explanation as why that's over budget by so, ma so yep. much. Um, the other one is the highway supplies repair maintenance service. We had budgeted $2,500 for that and we're pretty close to 7,000. It's like 6,991 uh, for 30.25. Okay. okay. I think that may have been stuff that maybe should have gone under um, perhaps highway construction, some of those things. Because we have, so I'm on 430.25 is the one that we, we had an overage on. Okay. And the yeah, other I one mean, is for- Sometimes like, I'm like, I don't know what this is. And so um, again, in QuickBooks, when you enter in a certain um, vendor, it'll yeah. automatically pull up the chart, the code of accounts. Yeah. So if you want to look through that with me, I'll be more than happy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We could recategorize things if, if you know. That's that's yeah. fine. But like just from looking at it, I think some of the some of the expenses from that one were actually probably more heavily budgeted for four thirty nine, which is the highway like construction. Yeah. Uh, which things like if we bought riprap or. Yeah. Um, other things like that, that would go yeah. in there. Same thing with like highway construction wages. We didn't okay. budget anything for okay, so, it, but... so th there's, there's an error here, like road yeah. wages. I don't know why we budgeted 10,000 road wages. Should so, have been so 25, I, I kind of, yeah. I agree with you on that, but I yeah. looked back at the 2021 budget. So the budget for 2021 for road wages actually did have 10,000. Right. Oh, wait, wait, yeah, here's 10,000. 10, right, so that should have been 25. Now that could have been just a, a clerical error on my part when I was entering the data. Yeah. And so that might've just been like use endpoint user entry on here. So, um, okay. Yeah, so I set that to 25,000 for, okay. next, for next year. So you're you're still at the 430 highways, roads and streets category, correct? Yes. Okay. So coming down to 437, repairs of tools and machinery. Yeah. That we really need to increase that. I, I think we really need to fairly say about 15,000. Yep. A, a lot of our stuff is just kind of falling apart. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that actually puts us up to a $56,000 shortfall on things. Yeah. So what I would actually suggest is we, we have the money in the liquid fuels for a lot of the road work. Yes. And the road work is... And we'll, we'll do the road fund next, but uh, the road fund we're allocating basically four hundred thousand dollars in road work. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily have to keep that ninety thousand dollars in construction. Yeah, we could turn that down to forty five thousand dollars, and we're only short eleven thousand dollars at that point. Okay, um, we do forty thousand dollars. We're only short six thousand dollars at at that point. Um, the other thing is for like engineering services, stormwater, we have budgeted $10,000. Okay. This is something that in prior years we've had an expense for, but we have not had an income. This should be almost a 100% pass through the same yep. thing with the sewage enforcement yep. officer. Yep. Right. If we're expecting right. an ex right. yeah. uh, that one for the engineering services, that's 446.31. No, I don't know. I might be missing sheet. Okay. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah. So, so yeah. anyway, with that one, we have budgeted 10,000, but okay. in prior years, we've not had Anything. like, um, I don't think we have a category for that. Unless we put that into like, uh, subdivision land. No, that's saldo. Um, building permits, sewage permits. So we should probably make a code of accounts specifically for uh, like stormwater 
Okay. Fees. So, so the problem with the stuff that I'm tracking now for engineering, and I actually asked the accountants. So there's the stuff that, that is the township pays for in general services. And then there's the stuff that's the pass through issue yeah. where we're billing out to people. So I, had, I sent a message to the accountant and said, Hey, can we, can we categorize this differently? Can I have like whatever different uh, code of accounts on it? I didn't get a response from them. So I don't know if that's an accounting issue on their part or on our part. Like it is just so much information for me to track mm. all the time. I'm able to pull up the info by customer account, by address. Um, but if we, I guess we could add tag on a 0. 0.00 whatever. Yeah. Um, or so the, it, it's just deciding how we want to do that. In the case of this, like, I don't know yeah. if it's a used number or not, but yeah. like if we have like sale of maps, sale of this building right. permits, we could do just like 362.0 four zero or something like that um, a for stormwater stormwater permits and fees because that really um, should be a situation that if we're expecting ten thousand so, dollars so you, you can't just like there is a there is the, the code of accounts, yeah yeah, so yeah stormwater so it'd be 446 so that's that's the expense side of it what i'm right, saying right. is we should have an income side of it because we're we're paying McCarthy. Yeah. That's the expense, but we're billing residents. So we have to have a like 300 series code for that income. Because at the end of the day, if somebody right. gets, let's, let's say they, they do gutters and they have to do a bunch of stormwater yeah. work, McCarthy Engineering says, okay, it's $3,000. We pay McCarthy. We turn around and say, hey, person, $3,000. We have to be able to log both that expenditure and that income. All right. So that's something to, so, so this is more of a housekeeping issue. Yeah, I'll, I'll highlight so. that, but that's that's gonna help us more balance the budget. Like uh, if I, you know, let, me, let me make sure I have the right, exactly the right number. Right. So engineering stormwater services, we have 10,000. If I put the 10,000 up right. as an income as well, so the two of them yep. kind of cancel out, same thing with the, the sewage enforcement officer. If I put the $10,000 in expenses and incomes, we now, especially because of me changing that 90 down to 40, we're 13,000 in the green. Like we're, we're not in the hole anymore. And it's just little, little adjustments like that that okay. we need to make to the budget to make sure that we're right, actually. Right. right, but you're also, I need to sit down with you at the computer yeah. and, and say, okay, this is what we're doing. Because, because that's part of the problem that I'm having. So I'm sending out these bills now, I'm able to track the customers but it's coming in as an expense when it should be coming in as, it, it, yeah. it, you know, yeah. it, so it's the, a washout. So, but I need a different code of accounts for it. Yeah, so, so, so for things that we're being billed for right. and then charging back, you right. have to have two code of accounts. You have right. to have the in and the out. Right. Whereas that's basic perfect. things like Comcast, that's all right. out. Like right. we never get anything right. back from Comcast other than if we get a credit, right. which I don't think really ever happens. Um, the otherwise we have things for like uh, refunds of prior year expenses, right? Like that's just kind of a general catch-all that can be used for that. And we had, we had about $3,151 this year that were refunded prior year expenditures. Right. So I need for you to take a look with me there because you're, yeah, yeah, it has to be done. Okay. So yeah, other than like remapping codes of accounts and I'll, yeah. I'll make sure that everybody has this because I've been poking at it while we, while we talk. Um, we basically just need to make sure that we're setting next yeah. year correctly. It like, would be like, uh, so then it would be like a 383 for, point. for the stormwater one. Yeah. We could do 383.16. Would it be 380 or would it be 360? The 360s are occupied. Three, <laughs> oh, oh, all of them yeah. are occupied? Well, well, there's, here's the different categories. So you have to look at it by category. So that first one is for basically tax so, stuff. Fees or zoning plan, right. plan review fees, 360, Right, but we don't, we don't really use that plan review fee. So you, um, what I'm, what I'm, it's for, for stormwater we do. Yeah. Okay, so for stormwater we do. What I'm talking about is the engineering services that we're billing back to the residents. I need another code of accounts for that. 
Oh, okay, yeah, okay, okay. So yeah, you and I were talking about okay. the same yeah. sort of no, no, thing, but two so, different so, things. Yes, so yes, yeah. Um, and and I think we do have some stuff under uh, stormwater. We've had like two or three for stormwater review. For codes? No, but then it gets, see, it's, that's the problem. That's the problem I'm having. So like we send money out to the engineer and when we receive the payments, that's where I'm having the problem. Yeah, because like the when we yeah. send money out to McCarthy, that's right. a 400 series. That's right. so. So what's happening is, I'll have to show you in the computer what's, yeah. what, what I'm talking about. I'll, I'll walk you through it if you have a few more minutes. Yeah. Now I'll be happy to look at that with you, but we just want to make sure that any of the things that, like I said, are okay. passed through because so, looking yeah. at the 2021 budget, yeah. the, the sewage enforcement officers yeah. are a prime example of this. Yeah. We had ten thousand yeah. dollars budgeted for the SEO, right. but other than if we're paying him for like sending letters out, mm -hmm. that should be an almost one-to-one -one relationship. For every dollar right. that right. he bills us, right. we should be getting a, a, an equal dollar back from right. whoever had the expense incurred. So that's going to be pretty pretty one-to-one. -one. Same thing with the stormwater fees. Same thing with the the uh, engineering review fees. There are going to be things that we pay McCarthy Engineering to do. Like I need you to design a culvert. That's that's going to come out of our pocket. However, things like plan reviews for homeowners, right. that should be a again a one to one relationship between okay. what we have as an expense and what we have as an income. So we have had fees for that. Okay, this year. for plan reviews, three sixty one point four. Okay, I guess my brain was on the engineering stuff. When it comes in as income, how should it be categorized? And that's the problem I'm, I'm having. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll work with you on, okay. on settling that out because okay. that's that's just clerical in nature. But it's yeah. now that we have the wheels turning yeah. on the fact that we are recuperating that money. It was yeah. a, an, an unknown element in the right. past. We need to budget appropriately right. for I'd, that. I bumped this up to um, uh, um, 5000 or so. I just thought of this. Alan told me that... Um, He's going to be passing on to us about two thousand dollars to add us on his software. He had to update his software to add us. Yes. On. Okay. Yes, we did get a we did get a bill from Alan about okay. all yeah. kinds of stuff that he needed to do in order to add us on. Yeah. So okay. we did receive that bill. Okay. Yeah. So that wouldn't be an issue. Yeah. So that's yeah. Yeah. that's that's actually that raises another interesting point because that would be part of I guess codes enforcement for sewage. Yep. We don't have anything budgeted for that. Like we haven't for the past number of years. So that would be really kind of a one-time yep. mm -hmm. expense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm wondering if that would maybe be better off being a part of something else like for example sewage enforcement officer we have ten thousand dollar budgeted yeah. as an, an expense and then i just put ten thousand dollars as an income if i change this to twelve thousand yeah we're still we're still above water from a, a cost standpoint but we have extra expense in to account for even if we made this fourteen thousand if there are things that he does like mailing costs or software updates yeah. or anything like that that we're as a township paying out as the greater group, everybody that's a taxpayer has a hand in this versus I replaced my septic system and I have to pay for him to come out. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. What about administrative things? Like if somebody doesn't come back right, there. Right. And he does, yeah. he does you know, charge an administrative you know, things. Kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, he must have gone over this when I was in the. Well, no, you. Yeah. you no, no, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, I'm just like going back up. Yeah. Here. But you, you, you addressed everything that I addressed in the email. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Yeah. So I went through that. Um, yeah. The only other thing is the backhoe. Um, in here, I put in, I believe it is capital expenditures. Do you have the copier in? Hmm? Do you have the copier in? Uh, copy I believe I put that in there. Let me, let me check the backhoe thing and yeah. then I'll check the office supplies. Um, I'm trying to remember what code of account that fell under. Because I did do that. Um, highways, capital purchases, 430.74. I put that in as $25,000 for next year. Okay. Um, reasonably being, I think the, the lowest cost used one was like 39,000 yeah. and some change. Um, if we budget $25,000 next year, that obviously we probably want to finance it. That would pay for the okay. majority of it within okay. the next two years. If we keep that, that steady, okay. um, we'd also have money in there for, if we have to purchase 
anything else. Like we go, oh, we need a new plow or we need this or we need the, or any literally anything else that's physical capital expenditure equipment. Um, we'd have the budget in which to do that. Whereas we've, I think, just allocated that out of other things like repairs mm -hmm. in the past. You, do, you have $1,500 in for office equipment. Yeah. Yeah, we need to increase that to at yeah. least five. So, hello. Office equipment. That much? Yes, we need that copier. So uh, <laughs> I think I, I sent out one at like seven o'clock this morning and then I sent another one out at eight. I actually do have $5,000 for 405.26. Oh, okay. Um, that much. Yeah. No, this one. Well, if you're you got these, right? Yeah. So I want to budget high okay. for one simple reason. Okay. Uh, you might not be able to get a used one. Okay. Um, and there are going to be some other things because it's considered office equipment. We may have to buy. Like, okay. Let's say okay. monitors die, or okay. you need a new keyboard, okay. or the phone craps out. A new out. monitor. Yeah. A new, new monitor. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. like we need okay. an extra keyboard for yeah. you know, like we need to be able to okay. buy that sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. I would love to see us get a, a multifunction device and MFD on the cheap, but I want to. Uh, the scanner, printer, fax, oh, yeah, yeah, copier. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to see us get that on the cheap, but I want to budget under the assumption that we may not be able okay. to. Okay. Um, Can I get uh, 415 emergency management? Yep. Yep, 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 yep. yep. So management, I put 5,000. 5, okay. uh, like I said, I think, yeah. and double check me, look at the, yeah. look at this, the Excel sheet that I sent. Everything that you have here, yeah, there yeah, were, yeah. there were a couple that I highlighted, like yeah. repairs of tool, machinery, other. We didn't actually have a budget okay. for that. That that's a code of account that did not show up on the 2021 budget. So we will want to either move that to a different code of account. Like there's 437.25 that we've only, we've used uh, yeah. eight thousand, basically nine thousand yeah. out of that. Really should probably actually be in 437.25 yeah, yeah, yeah. rather than just yeah. 437. So so if you have a little bit of time. We could. I've got a if, couple. If I've got a couple of minutes. If you don't, we, yeah. we could. We could do. It. Um, actually, if the sooner yeah. get out of here, because it's the. Just no, it's F okay. FYI, I was going to use this for the comments today. Is the hazardous waste collection at the oh, Berg's Ag okay. Center? Mm -hmm. Um, I have a bunch of stuff that I'm cleaning out my garage on. Um, if uh, you have to register for it, but there is, you you can still do that to my knowledge. So you know, yeah. I, I think the only person that's going to hear this promptly is Butch. So if you have things that you need to take, you still can. Um, but that's like 1230. Okay. I, I, I do have some time off this upcoming yeah. week, so yeah, I can, I can come in. Okay. Yeah, I can come in even and, and sit down with you. Okay. But um, everything on here, I tried to make it as descriptive as possible. Don't yep. let, don't let the sheer volume of yellow on here concern you. Yeah. It's everything and anything that I thought was like, okay, okay. we need to look at this because like in yeah, the case so of like trans recreation, transportation, transportation. that's okay. like the mower. Put that at 300. That's yeah. technically a new thing yeah. that we didn't have budgeted. Uh, participation, uh, participants, recreation uh, was not something that we had as a budgeted yeah. item. We've spent about, actually, I think okay, we, so, we got, so, so, we got yeah. a turn back on that because it was a negative number. Okay. So some of that was, had to do about donations mm -hmm. and stuff. So I can pull it up in this system. And yeah. Oh, and like I said, like, there. don't let the sheer volume yeah, no, of yellow no. scare you. That's just <laughs> things that I saw that were either a non-budgeted item or it's something that we had that yeah. didn't have a code of accounts. If there's the evening you could get with me and sure. we could clarify it on the computer. Yep. 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 We can yeah. do that point maybe even Tuesday yep. or something like that. But, Perfect. Um, otherwise, Butch, I'm Butch, sorry. is there any of the, any of these back codes that you recommend? Well, well, my phone already. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, and uh, I, I, it's, it's, uh, I haven't seen any mail. Any key magazine. I was looking through it this morning when I was eating breakfast. There's a use, a use 13 model case. Uh, it has. Uh, 2280 R's on it, 2280 R's uh, for 44 nine. I mean, it's not awful. It'll be two years worth of budgeting at 25. Yeah. I mean, and that's going to, by the time we approve the budget and actually go to spend it in 2022, it's it's the market. Yeah, Some things are going to be available, yeah, yeah. not available, et cetera. Yeah. Um, it looks, it 
slide here. Yeah. Yeah. I think I've, I've managed to walk. <laughs> yeah, it does. Twice this year. Oh yeah. But I'm glad oh, yeah. to be out that. Tom, 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 Tom. Yeah. We and can go over the stuff. Yeah. yeah. Then. Honestly speaking, Those just from great. going through this exercise. I don't know anything about this stuff. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, it it looks pretty. I mean, I don't know um, anything about it either. But until I ask Butch. Yeah. And like I said, it's going to be subject to the market. Really so is. what's no, what's going to be available I mean, to use I want to now? Get something may not... that Butch feels comfortable with, and that well, it's going to be using. Uh, I, I've been doing. I I have my mindset on new, but uh, they're very expensive. <laughs> Oh, yeah, they're very expensive. Yeah. So I have I have the numbers wrong on here. Well, we, we could finance a new this. one for four years. Right. We can. Yeah, and that's 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 something worth right. considering too. And we'd want to have that discussion closer uh, to time. Yeah. Uh, but uh, uh, you know, are are we going to use new as as hard as you think? You know, I mean, if we have it, we'll use it. And if it's new, it's we don't have to worry quite as much about somebody yeah, else's the, problem. Right. Yeah. The, but, thing, the thing with the, the tractor we have, the lower tractor we have, the, it's, for, the, for the throttle, the, the foot throttle, the hinge is, is mm -hmm. broken off. They've been, they've been well used. Yeah. They've been well used, and we'll leave uh, it at that. Uh, we do need... We do need something. No, else. no, no argument here. <laughs> one of one of the things, and maybe not next year, maybe not the year after that, but one of the things that I'd still like to see us do is get a second little truck with a plow on it. That just by the the nature, and I'll, I'll diverge from the tractor thing for a second because I think we absolutely do need a tractor. We're hitting a point where a lot of our our, our equipment is is past its useful life. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I want to have another truck in the mix for two reasons. Both of our trucks are getting kind of old and we only have so many people that can do CDLs. So it would be, I think from a, a plowing standpoint, and even from just a general road work standpoint, it would be helpful to have a second small truck that we don't need a CDL driver for. Um, but that could also come out of that capital expenditure. If we do like the loader, if we finance the loader one year and we have $25,000 budgeted for it, then maybe, maybe do the truck the following year. The, the monthly cost of that is still going to be well within that $25,000 oh, yeah. annual fee for, or I shouldn't say fee, yeah. annual cost. For can we take some of that ARP money and bring it into this? We'd so have, we take we'd have some to money look. to put into the general no, fund? Yeah, so we'd have to look, but I don't think so. It be used on call. one of the things that Holly touched on Thursday on again. That, so this is, it, it's like this kind of gray area too. So right now, the way the rules are written is, you could, if you have two drivers in a truck, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because of COVID, you want to now make them in their own trucks. You can use the ARP money to buy a truck. So I think but, that, and that's that's interesting. Uh, However, we don't however, usually send, ever, we don't usually send two people. We out don't usually truck. have two people. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, well, you know, I was going to go with Butch this year. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah. I might need my own. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, uh, she she definitely said. Yeah, um, that's a great you know, area. Yeah. For yeah. Who's to yeah. say it? Yeah. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I, I don't know if we should if we should go down that particular lane, but that's an interesting well, point. Well, and you don't because you don't know how much documentation they're going to want in your reports. Mm -hmm to justify the purchase of that Not truck. to mention, even if we had two people out in a truck at a time, I don't know that we have the data points, the actual record keeping to be able to support that. Well, that's pro, what I mean, yeah. Pro like how, if, I mean, we don't know if they're gonna require that yeah. in the report, but what if they do? We have to assume that they're going yeah. to. We have to make that assumption. Uh, but getting back to the macro business, uh, the John Deere, if you wanna buy a new John Deere, you have to make the decision this month yet because uh, uh, well, they're they're the twenty eight seven. Uh, their prices are going up four percent. Four percent. Okay. Uh, uh, but he's, uh, the the salesman said all we have all the not available right now. Yeah. Uh, all they have to do is put our name in the computer. Yeah. And he gave me, I mean, I, I just didn't copy all this stuff because it's so much stuff. Yeah. But he gave me um, like a kind of spreadsheet on. Um, I'd be curious to see what the financing charges Of the financing. Yeah, I, um, I would too. You know, I mean, I have all I that stuff. I buy somebody else's guys. problems. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, if it's if it's in good condition, that's one thing. But yeah, yes, if, right. if it's going to be a situation where we have to pay, essentially, because you're probably not going to finance a used, you're going to have to pay that straight. 
if it's where we drop $43,000 all at once, or we do $1,500 a month for the next five years. So then, this three John Deere 310SL is actually 109.9. I had the prices wrong on there. I was looking at the wrong page. Yeah. That's okay. the one that we got to let them know. Yeah. Um, the, um, so the one that I had at 310L is listed as 125.316. That is actually um, 97.9. Okay. I mean, that's that's sub $100,000. It's $100,000. Yeah. Well, yeah. But yeah. Uh, 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 he, he, he doesn't recommend that one if you're going to do a lot of heavy work. Uh, the hydraulics are lighter. Yeah. And, I'd, uh, I'd rather get... Even the drop of copper... Yeah, I'd rather get the heavier equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'd rather get the heavier and, equipment. And then he said, uh, if you're going to finance it, uh, something over a hundred thousand, you can get for two point nine. I mean, two point five percent interest. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you're under a hundred, uh, it's uh, percent more. So I wrote yeah. down yeah. over a hundred thousand. You is three hundred. Uh, three hundred. 3.75% interest. Yeah. Um, but he said what, and they would finance it for us, but um, basically you can um, pay on the principal. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you, that's you, you can do additional gist, principal. That's payments. the short version yeah. of it. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, but you can, uh, you can, yeah. so you I, know, we, I have this stuff here if you want to look at uh, it. Yeah. yeah. I'd want to see if it's a five year or a 10 year. A week, less than a week to make a decision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I mean, even, uh, granted, like I don't want to waste like four thousand, but you right. figure four percent on one hundred thousand is four four thousand. Yeah. You so can I mean, pay it monthly, quarterly, semi-annually, or annually. I'd right. say probably from a cash flow standpoint, monthly would probably be better. So, but okay. again, it just comes down to: are we looking at a five-year term, a ten-year term? Mm -hmm. Because uh, sixty months. 60, that's, that's five, five years. years. That's five years. Um, so that would be probably about twenty-five thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Yeah, um, monthly would be 18 advance payment, arrears payment. Let's do advance 1886. Okay, and, and I also got a price on the new holiday. Yeah. So, would that come out of general funds? Right around that would be out of the general fund, yeah. Yeah, I would change the price with yeah. um, and he said the last, the last yeah. one he sold. You had to get out of Massachusetts or Boston. Yeah, we're, there's supply and, shortages mm -hmm. everywhere mm -hmm. for equipment. Like mm -hmm. at, at work, we were looking at buying some like networking equipment, and it's, I'm not even exaggerating, yeah. it's basically yeah. a year lead time mm -hmm. to get the stuff. And to get a new, new case, uh, uh, you can't get any to the middle of summer. Yep. Yeah, John Deere would also do training. Yeah. Okay. John Deere yeah. would do training and, uh, and that was why don't we just lock it in now? Yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to that. If we're if we're comfortable setting the twenty five thousand dollar budget for the capital expenditures, yeah. um, that would be that. We'd have to make sure that we just keep that budgeted for the next five years. Yeah. Um, with that said, because of the tweaks and everything that I've made, we're eight thousand three hundred and fifty four dollars and eighty six cents above. Like we're mm -hmm. we're beyond solvent at this point. So if we wanted to actually increase a couple of things here and there to get more to that zero to out, mm -hmm. we can. Mm -hmm. um, we can do a little tweaking. I would, I'll send out the revised thing. Okay. Both of you look at it. And like I said, everything is very clearly laid out. You can see what 2019's budget was, mm -hmm. 2021, or 2020, 2021, mm -hmm. what our year to date through October is, what our projected mm -hmm. is. And then the final column is the actual proposal for 2022's mm -hmm. budget. I guess uh, something to keep in mind. If we, it's going to mess up, the accountant's not going to like it, but if we get that money back from the unreimbursed engineering services. We'd have to, honestly, in best practice, we should amend the budget right. the same way that we're amending it for the ARP right. money. But just, just to keep in mind, that might be a $25,000 chunk that we could turn around and put right onto this. Yeah, then, which would be good. Yeah. Which would be good. And, so, and, and John Deere, uh, if, if we don't have to, Take that out five years. Mm -hmm. We want to pay early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's let's hypothetically yeah. say, like you said, it was eighteen. 
1896. So I, I would say, and like I do this with certain personal accounts too. Mm -hmm. If you have a situation where it's only 18,000, you budgeted 25 and you don't have any other things that you've had to buy, like we didn't have to go buy a tamper or we didn't have to right. buy a file blade. If right. we have $7,000 surplus yeah, going into yeah. December, we just <laughs> dump it into there and then yeah. hopefully cut that down further. All right, um, I will need you more for this. Uh, that's that's not. Yeah, I said to him, like, make a list of stuff you're going to need. Yeah. Yeah. He really needs to know. Yeah. Yeah. Christmas, Christmas is coming. You didn't <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. Why well, you think Santa Claus yeah. is just going to drop things yeah. off? I'm, I'm hoping. I'm hoping. Yeah. <clears throat> um, well, I'll, I'll pay for the personalized plate for the front that says Butch's toy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the, this says if you take out a five-year, 60-month, and you only pay it once a year, you're going to be paying... You're going to be paying more. 20, well, 22359 it says arrears payment. Yeah, so... 22981. So, so the way this works is it's much more like your mortgage or any other loan. If you pay before the statement is due, you're actually technically not accruing the full amount of okay. interest, yeah. okay. which is why I said, like, from a cash flow standpoint, we should yeah. do it monthly yeah. and we should make sure that it's paid, uh, yeah. essentially paid yeah. ahead. But the um, way he explained it was basically... You yeah. Pay. And it's, like I said, it's, yeah. it's the same thing with, like, your mortgage. If yeah. you pay yeah. at the due date or yeah. after the due date, it's actually going to cost you more in interest yeah. than if you, or, or like, even with a credit card, if you pay the statement balance before it's actually due, you don't mm -hmm. get paid, you don't get incurred any interest. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I, he couldn't tell me when... When uh, we could get the tractor, or the I mean, it's uh, sooner is better he, than later. But he if, said he, he's thinking I, uh, April, I, March. I don't think I put it on here too. All three of these um, new, uh, all three of these companies are co-stars participating. Yeah, good. Yeah. So it may not have to be put out to bid. Good. Yeah. The other thing that is worth mentioning is they are willing to give us five thousand for our existing loader, our, no, our well loved that's loader. That's just Weco. Oh, it's just Weco. That's okay. Just Weco. Okay, and um, it might be worth asking if Weco is willing to, if that's a trade in only thing, or if we can sell yeah. that to yeah. them. I'd imagine no, it's a trade in only. I think you asked. You yeah. ask John Todd, and he's they don't do trade. Yeah. 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 So I mean, so it would be straight sale. So John, the John Deere. Um, Rep that oh, okay. Really I thought you meant. I thought you meant about Weco. No. So my my question is like, if Weco said five thousand for the loader, twenty five hundred for the little John Deere, um, well, they if just, uh, if they would still potentially, if yeah. that's seventy five hundred dollars that we could still get, yeah. or if that would be a situation where we just we do a public auction or something. I'm not sure. Well, uh, Todd, Todd, the John Deere man said uh, there's a, you can go on Facebook. No, uh, there's we can't. A, there's we, a, we get emails all the time. It's called Municipid. Yeah. Um, where you could put it on there. So yeah. then technically you're still within the, the advertising, of, putting it out for bid kind yeah, of because yeah. you're selling yeah. Yeah. catch a property. There's, so there's a whole other there's whole the there's whole a ream of rules about, that. about yeah. Um, okay. So but with you purchase if you do it through this municipid thing, it's it covers all that stuff. Yeah. Right? So but if we can't get it as a trade-in, that's my point. Not anywhere no, near that no, much. Not no, anywhere near no, that no, much. Uh, they they told me out of recall. <laughs> don't, don't spend the money. Yeah. We put it on our lot. Somebody will buy. Yeah. Yeah. Even for parts. Yeah, as I say, so bottom line is it, we're we're looking at let's say it's ninety nine thousand or a hundred thousand. If we can actually get seventy five hundred dollars for the two pieces of equipment, that takes that down that much further. Yeah. So I, I'm not opposed to it. So yeah, if you guys really are well. if you guys are in the same vein, I would say let's say yeah. Thursday night that we we let's make a motion it. to move forward so with that. You wanna do the, well, I'll just put everything like I have it now, and then just put a motion. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Shall I call? Uh, Todd, John Deere man, just doing heads up. Not, uh, well, not yet. He, you know, I told him because he's on the paper that he has to know by the 27th. And I said, Well, we don't have a meeting till the 28th. And he said, Well, as long as you let me know in the morning, uh, he, he the said, uh, or, or the 29th, 29th. Um, you know, he, he'll. I, I'd let, let Sue handle it. Yeah. Like, appreciate the offer, but let Sue handle yeah, it. Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to call him in case you do decide Thursday night that you don't want to do this. Yeah. I, mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I think we're fairly I'm resolute, but I'd much rather wait until the 28th. I know, 28. but, but. <laughs> yeah. Sure, you don't want a former supervisor. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, All right, boy. so we'll just make sure we have a motion. I'll, I'll correct the numbers too. And okay. if you want to look at spec sheets, anything, they're all here. I just, yeah. I mean, it's like 
I have to a lot of pages, so yeah, I don't like, know. I, I mean, I'll yeah. look it over. I'm not, by not by no means an expert on that. Yeah. I know the core functionalities, but if Butch says like, yeah, this is the one that we want. It's got the, the heavier hydraulics on it. It's going to let us do X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take that as, as a statement of fact. So which one was that, Butch? The S L. I, I trust. Yeah, yeah, trust the, just put just the just. The letters. Oh, I'll, 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 we'll talk we'll, about that. We'll talk about it. Yeah, computers, we'll have it. I trust your. Yeah, if it's yeah. insurance, we trust you. Yeah, exactly. exactly. If it's healthcare or legal stuff, exactly. we trust yeah, I read. Legal stuff, yeah. we go to Irene. Um, and medical stuff. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> no, and uh, so I'll find out to Thursday to uh, if we don't buy from Rico, if they will yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Give us for our equipment. Well, and like Sue said, worst case scenario, we do the municipid thing, yeah. and that that satisfies the criteria. Yeah. Well, no, I, uh, I mean, I don't think we can just sell it. No, See, we, there's a whole bunch. Oh, of yeah, rules. this is something we'll have we to check just, with like Andy or yeah. Courtney on. Uh, hmm. But as long as we're playing by the rules, if it's equipment we're not going to be using anymore right. because we're replacing it, we absolutely should try and. I mean, I, I think the rules say you have to put it out for bid. Oh yeah, no, I, yeah, so. I know that's the case, but I know there's there's like yeah. there's bid, and then there's like yeah, it's still bidding, but like the pended stuff right, right, uh, right, or right, like, right. like that. So right. there, there's more than one way to approach it. But don't give WECO the impression that they're going to be able to take this equipment because yeah. that's not the case. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask them, like, if we don't buy anything, yeah. Yeah. Is, is private sale still an option? Yeah. And that might be a situation where we put it out to bid and then we send bids out yeah. to people. But um, I don't, they don't participate with co-stars, do they? I don't know. Because everything is used. Yeah. Everything's used. Everything's used. Yeah. And you have so you can't, yeah. yeah. I mean, if, if we can afford it, I like the, the premise of new because you know exactly what you're getting. You don't have any weird, like, yes, yeah, I'm going to really, really beat on this thing. Yeah. Well, I like certain truck service out at Bethel. They, they have a used one, a used case right now. And, uh, and it only has, uh, Two thousand hours, or around two thousand hours, and uh, it, it's a repro. And I said, "Well, why? Why is it a repro? My bearing went out in the transmission, mm -hmm. and and the owners decided not to yeah. fix it up. Not it would have cost fifteen thousand dollars to fix it up. Yep. Not to mention when you buy new, you have a warranty on, right, whereas yeah. you don't have right. warranties on right. on used. Yeah. Um, Okay, so what I would say, I think at this point we're pretty we're pretty stable on the budget. I'll send so. I'll send this yeah. out. Like I said, look at it, tweak yeah. it if there's things that we want to adjust yeah. up or down. Right. If I could get together with you yes. some, one evening, yep. we'll make sure some of the minor things are, are categorized correctly, yep. and then uh, this one will have a little bit of a Like I could give you an example, like the recreation transportation. Mm -hmm. Like where do I categorize the mower? The mower fuel. Yes, and it didn't go. It was under a different category. I'm like, this isn't correct. Yeah. So I said, what code would that fall no, under? I think yeah. we just, we have to yeah. normalize on a couple of things. Yeah. Maybe re reassign a couple of codes yeah. of accounts or yeah. say like, okay, we put it, this, this expense was in this one this year, but yeah. it really probably should be in this one next year. Yeah. Um, one of the things, and time is always, is, is always a premium, but I kind of like us to do this same sort of balancing exercise, like in June or, or like maybe uh, April or May yeah. or something like that, to like midpoint in the at. year yeah. to say, okay, here's where we're at year to date. Have we overrun one yeah. of the budgets? Have we put a perfectly valid expense in the wrong code mm -hmm. that it's it has every right being on the books, but it shouldn't have been in office supplies because it's actually like uh, reimbursement for secretary expenses, right. like that sort of thing. Right. I think that would be a, a really helpful thing. Um, not that we're in any sort of bad shape whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I think we're, we're great on mm -hmm. this, but it would help maybe identify things like right. the highway wages, and maintenance, that's what and I repair. Do. I run a budget and I'm like, does mm -hmm. this seem right? And then, you know, then I'll go back and I'll review things. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So I'll the budget holds the line on tax. Yeah. 2.0, 2. 2. no tax increase. Yeah, that's yeah. when I, when I set out mm -hmm. to the, using the reports that Irene gave me, I had this tooled in such a way that we would not, or would we would set ourselves up in a stance of not having to raise taxes. Yeah. Like, I don't want to do that unless we absolutely have to for two reasons. One, nobody likes it when taxes get raised. Mm -hmm. And even like, if we raise it 0.1 mils, it only gets us really $10,000 in order to get any huge or, or meaningful sum, we'd have to raise to basically three or four mils, mm -hmm. which I, I don't want to touch with a 10 foot pole. Mm -hmm. So I'd much rather, and not that we have a, an overly uh, cushy budget, but I'd much rather try and squeeze one area or eliminate something that we're like, okay, do we really have to do this? Right. 
and and we did not spend money no and, and that's actually money. that's that's evident of the fact yeah. that um in like the road fund we're actually forty one thousand dollars ahead we took yeah. in forty one thousand dollars more than what we spent yeah. this year because there's a number of things that just haven't right. happened like we didn't we weren't able to get the culverts in because of delays in permit processing and things um the there's only thing that might change that slightly is yeah. if the line painting comes yeah. out of that but that's that's not a huge sum of right. money. And we spent very little um, on building maintenance. Yeah, we were massively under on building maintenance. Yeah. I think we spent like twenty five hundred dollars yeah. on building maintenance, and we had fifty four thousand. Yeah. Um, so, I'll, like I said, I'll send this around. The nice thing about this is just really don't touch the main sheet. Um, any of the columns are column I on every single sheet. It's the proposed twenty twenty two. You can change stuff in there, and it will recalculate the whole sheet automatically. So you can see exactly like, okay, rather than if we're getting two hundred and thirty-four, if we get two hundred and fifty thousand, what does that do for our bottom line? It instantly puts us up rather than the eight thousand, we're at yeah. twenty-two thousand. So, like, how did I come up with that seven four three three number? I, I it must have been in an email. It must have been. It, 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 I think it's happened. aggregate tax, not yeah. just interim. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was yeah. the, that's actually the last item on the agenda. Are we I'm good. comfortable yeah. Yeah. with that? Let's do a, let's kick the tires on it Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. Um, that way we can have something finalized for final discussion review and then hopefully uh, adopt, like adopting it in the sense of advertising it so that it's going yeah, through I the mean, motions. You don't have we, to wait until December. You can no, no, yeah. I, I want to, yeah. I, I, yeah. barring something <laughs> catastrophic, yeah. I want to do that mm -hmm. Thursday night. Yeah. I want to have that wound yeah. up and let loose yeah i'm um, just trying to keep things healthy mm -hmm. just really and, and trying <laughs> honestly the yeah the the budget analysis is it's evident of that the only thing yeah. like i said that there's a couple of things like maybe the yep. the wages that were ten thousand, but should have been yeah. 25 that must um, have been me when I no, no no in fairness yeah. I, just from looking back at the prior <laughs> budgets for the past couple of years yeah. um last year we only had twelve thousand okay. dollars in that category so i think it was a situation where we said like continue to set it as 10 yeah uh because any of the other things like i think some of the stuff that came up that were allocated there might have been like snow and ice yep. removal yep. And, and things like that so we have again just we have things that by all rights have every need to be on the books but it needs to be in a different code like it, it got aggregated here yeah. rather than somewhere else. So, so it looks like we're massively yeah. over when in we're effect not. we're, we're perfectly within the yeah. confines of those two codes. Yeah. So. Yep. So I'll go over that. I need to for a stone code. Several people brought up during the course of the meeting about roads. Yeah. And, well, and one of the engineers in the room, I don't know which one it was, because I was, there was a lot of people in there just shouting from the other side, mm -hmm. said, well, why don't we fix them right? Put down the right base. And I said, I do would... you know how much that costs per mile? Yeah. He says, yeah, I have a pretty good idea. I said, do you, you have 20 miles of road? I think we actually have, said, no, we, we, have, have like we have 34. <laughs> 34 miles. Do you yeah. have a massive increase in your taxes for us yeah. to do that? I mean, a massive increase. Well, yeah, we'd have to go to like 12 mills. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's it's the same thing that's come up anytime like Al or anybody else says anything about road work. Like I will I will say with an absolute straight face, I would love nothing more Absolutely. to be able to say, okay, we're just going to start on one one end of the township and we're just going to repave everything, just new roads across the board. But you figure it's about four hundred thousand dollars a linear mile. We have thirty four miles. That is a lot of zeros mm -hmm. on that number. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of zeros. Even if we finance that, if we tried to finance that. The loan amount, the principal amount, that's thirteen point six million dollars. <laughs> Thank you, Irene. Um, and that's that's going off of what it costs, like a number of years ago, to do school was, road. Uh, the, they were finishing that project when I started here five years. ago. Yeah, so I mean, that's that's. I guarantee you. Let's let's even sure. if five hundred thousand dollars a square or, or linear mile. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's that's it's 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 a 15 million dollar project if we took all the money that we had for our entire if we took our entire operating budget every single year that would pay for years. that might just it, pay for the road work just the road work not any of the wages or the building or the heat yeah. or the electricity or any of the other public services yes. that we do some people would be happy with that <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. he was very quiet the whole room no, yeah. no, no, no. Like I said, I'd, I'd, I'd love to do it, but we have to work within the box of what we have. Yeah. It is what, I yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody would like to do this more than we would. Yeah, I'd but love to see it get done. To to do yep. I mean, even if we try to break it into chunks, it's still, that's the, the, the thing that we've been wrestling with is it's still cost prohibitive because just the, the culverts, those four culverts alone, 
are basically in basically the entire road work budget for next year. Yep. And that's that's not repaving anything. Yeah. 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 It is. It is. For something that really don't see much. Yeah. It's 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 anything infrastructure, if it's doing its job right, you don't even know it's there. The only time you know it's there is if there's a problem. Yeah. And that's the case with whether it's roads or especially the culverts, you just quietly drive over them all the time. It only becomes a problem when you have this huge, like depressed bump in the road or the road actually falls through or like things like that are the only time people pay attention to it. And then it's catastrophic. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just check the inventory on my side. Mm -hmm. Four 45s, four 35s, two 25s, and I need stop signs. Okay, I'll order some stop signs and a couple more 25s. I'll put the order in MSI. They're usually pretty quick. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they are. Okay. Okay. That's the last item on the agenda. I have no further comments. Irene? I just want to thank Sue for doing all the work she always does. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize how much time she spends in the office and doesn't put in for those hours. And she's amazing and wonderful. And I couldn't do any of my stuff without her. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I, I, I echo that yeah. sentiment. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, very much so. Yes, thank you, everyone. This is. Yeah. Yeah. No, everyone's just a, a wonderful group of people to work with. And this has got to be one of the most rewarding jobs I've ever had. Yeah, so, to work together. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, the, yeah. that's, the, that's the goal. Yeah. We need to work as a team. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody works as a team. Yeah. You guys make it easy. So. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Like I said, we're privileged. We're lucky that we have. Everybody helps in their own, their own way. Yeah. It's a well, it's a very good, well-rounded group of people that we have involved doing you know stuff. How to push. The perfectionist is no, you're, you're just taking everything. The word group of I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't have a CDL license. So do you, I go hot, do, do you want to do you want to get a or or a track? Do, do you want to get a CDL? Uh, <laughs> and really that was, was that was changed some of the rules about getting a CDL. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. I, I know it's it's, 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 it's decision. Yeah, it's, 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 it's I know there's a lot of there's a lot of extra yeah there's a lot of extra uh, stuff. Uh, but somebody told told the, told me and Sue here lately right? that uh, after the first of the year you're gonna have it's gonna get real straight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's strict enough now. <laughs> yeah. And we have a shortage of truck drivers. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. 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 Really gonna make it fun. Really? Yeah. Uh, no, but I'll, I'll try and do my best to yeah. try and coordinate. Yeah. So two, two things that, that kind of also highlights the maybe not 2022, but 2023, we may want to allocate more money for capital expenditures to get a second small truck so that we have more people that are able to drive trucks concurrently. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, also, in a state of emergency, that requirement for CDL for the large truck is waived mm -hmm. during that emergency. Yeah. So if we actually declare it a snow emergency, Butch could actually drive the large truck. Mm -hmm. So it's not something you want to do too often, but yes, it's one of the emergency protocols is you are allowed to use non-CDL drivers in a CDL vehicle. Mm -hmm. And so, most of our CDL license, license drivers uh, don't have to work that day. So I mean, it works out well, but in a, in a pinch, <laughs> yeah. in a pinch, you or I technically could get behind the wheel of that thing mm -hmm. in, a, in a state of emergency. Not that we necessarily want to, but we could mm -hmm. legally. How old are you? 14. <laughs> oh, he's got two more years. Two more years. I know. Two more no, years. No. Two yeah. Yeah. No. Emergency. No. Don't be a truck driver. No. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 So, uh, Irene, any other further comments? Nothing. Jim. Sue. Nothing. Fantastic. In that case, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now pretty much twelve noon on the on the nose. There a second. Right, second. Jim. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone. Have a nice rest of the week.